what's going on out there, everybody? Welcome to the Watch Along tonight. Really glad to have you along. Got a great guest here tonight, a little bit of an impromptu get-together, and I'm really excited to be able to bring this broadcast to you guys tonight, a little Watch Along. Edmonton Oilers, LA Kings, Game 7. What else could you ask for? A game filled full of Game 7s. We'll talk a little bit about those earlier games later on in the broadcast. So thanks for joining. If you guys want to hit that subscribe button, like button, I appreciate that. Just glad to have you along for a little bit of fun tonight. Not going to get too formal. We're going to kick back, eat some popcorn. I think our guest brought some popcorn. At least he he told me he was going to. So uh, (laughs) anyhow, so uh, formed a little bit of a a friendship here with uh, my guy Ty Jacobs. And he's always in the comments, so I was like, hey, Ty, why don't you just jump on the live stream tonight and, uh, you know, get in the Zoom room and we'll watch the game together, do a watch along and have some fun with it. So without further ado, I want to bring him in, Ty Jacobs at Sea Kraken Dude. Welcome to the show, Ty. This is your uh, Sasquatch NHL live stream debut, so thanks for coming. How are you doing tonight? Uh, I'm doing well. How about yourself? I'm good. I'm, I'm feeling a little bit uh, Game 7 fatigued here, but we got one more big one. Right. And so <laughs> what are your two thoughts more coming tomorrow. in tonight? <laughs> yeah, two more tomorrow and it's just a weekend full of game seven. So what are your thoughts coming in tonight? Oilers, Kings, what are we looking for as we go into this big, big game uh, in the West? Uh, I mean, I think the barn is going to play an advantage here. This crowd gets crazy loud and they can definitely fire the boys. Uh, obviously, if they have the kid in, uh, they did that into the season rush where I think they went nine and zero with him in attendance. Uh, if he's not there, they're absolutely crazy. But uh, one of the things I noticed kind of coming into the game was dry sidle is kind of questionable. Uh, I think that might be a key piece. You go from, you know, I guess you, they have their desperation line where they have McDavid and dry sidle out of the ice at the same time versus kind of how they do their one two line setup with one on one line, one on the other. Uh, I think that could be a key piece. If you're only having to try to focus on McDavid, uh, I think Kopitar is up to the task there. But yeah. The other big piece is in net. I mean, you got Jonathan Quick that's been here, done that. Uh, he's Stanley Cup champion. Like, he knows what to do tonight. Uh, Mike Smith. I wish I could say uh, nice things about him, but I'm not as uh, not as confident there uh, in Edmonton's net. But I think the biggest key to the game for myself is going to be staying out of the box. Uh, watching these games today, you can see just at the you know trip of the whistle that momentum switch big time. And one team can go on the charge. So that's that's what I'm going to be watching for. Yeah, you definitely want to see Edmonton, if you're rooting for them, get that quick start like they did the other night. The Kings, on the other hand, you know, typical. You want to kind of weather the storm and, mm-hmm. uh, you know, get in there and settle things down. Maybe make it a little bit boring if you can. Because like you said, the energy mm-hmm. and the emotion in there tonight is going to be pretty crazy. Oilers fans, they get pretty rowdy. And I, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Looks like they're doing the uh, anthems right now, so we're about ready to do puck drop. If you want to let everybody know yeah. where you're watch, uh, where you're watching from tonight, Ty, it's uh, a little bit further south of Seattle Metro, right? Yeah, so I mean, my 32 crew family definitely knows. Uh, I like to show up at the games and hang out, but I am coming all the way from Vancouver, and no, I don't mean BC. I mean Vancouver, Washington, uh, across the Columbia River from Portland, Oregon. Uh, so. Washington, not to be mistaken with DC either. I get that a lot. It's it's really actually kind of annoying living here because you get, oh, you live in Vancouver? How's British Columbia? Or you tell them yeah. I, I live in Washington, you know, and they're like, oh, wow, what's DC like? And it's just like, oh my gosh. You always got to qualify um, it with Washington state. If you say yeah. state, then they know, oh, yeah. okay, yeah, you're south, you're like South Alaska. I get it now. Yeah. And if you say that you live in Portland, everybody just wants to talk about riots. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't really want to do that. A little crazy down there. Mm-hmm. So, so, uh, so Ty and I, we've kind of gotten to know each other throughout the season, going to Kraken games. Uh, we interact quite a bit on Twitter. So, if you're on Twitter, follow him over there at C Kraken Dude. I've got the nameplate right over his head there, and uh, you know, he's a, a great, great friend now and great hockey mind. So, we're glad to have you along, Ty. And um, he's got the guitar there. So if you guys want to throw out requests, he's, he told me that he's going, to, <laughs> he's going to play some songs for us and serenade the Leafs into their tea time tomorrow. But it's not uh, plugged in. I feel like we might want to have somebody check on Steve Dangle, by the way, <laughs> I love, I love watching his uh, YouTube channel and I, 
I hate to say it, but I'm really looking forward to that next uh, rant reaction from him. Mm-hmm. So I don't know. Do you, do you watch uh, Steve Dangle very much? Or? Oh, absolutely. Uh, my <laughs> my favorite so far has been watching the evolution of his live streams uh, as he's watching the games, sometimes yeah. with the boys, sometimes by himself. And they, they added that little heart rate monitor up there <laughs> where you can watch that thing. And you know, it's it's the start of the game. It's game seven, Ingenious. like 120. And he's just sitting here and he's kind of fidgeting. And he's kind of like, oh, man, getting excited, doing his thing. And then you can almost tell what's going on in the game based on what his heart rate is doing. Uh, been <laughs> super impressed with it. I think they do a, a fantastic product there. Steve Dangle, a fantastic, you know, hockey mind, great broadcaster, very entertaining person. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and there's a uh, there's a lot of them that kind of pop up, and I've been you know getting into a lot of these different channels and and going down the rabbit hole. And oh, by mm-hmm. the way, Brian Brian just logged in here, says good evening, fellas. What's up, Brian? Thank you for dropping oh, by. Oh man, good to see you. Causing some trouble in the chat. Uh, we're gonna have fun here tonight, <laughs> and we just dropped the puck, so we're we're getting going here. And uh, I don't know, like Brian, maybe if you want to post in the chat, like who do you think's gonna win tonight? What are your thoughts on some of the prior games? Get the get the chat rolling a little bit here. And I mean, um, he's a Canes yeah. fan, so we we gotta we gotta get the feel. So I was talking with him through a, a good portion of the game. So yeah, he he's saying Steve Dangle win or lose is must see for sure. Yeah, <laughs> we were talking about that. Yeah, he's he's very entertaining. Uh, I, I love the channel, and like you were saying, Ty, it's kind of fun to go watch some of his old videos, like as he's improved and, and changed his his show format and just the evolution of uh, a really popular youtuber it's really cool to see that stuff but okay so we're looking here we're trying to get that quick start right so Edmonton um, I don't know what you got to see him get to the net first of all you don't want to just put it yeah. all on Connor McDavid's shoulders tonight you got to have a little bit of the supporting cast good goaltending um, I don't know what, what do you think it's I uh, I mean I just Saw uh, like a, a very physical play there by McDavid. Uh, he's a big dude. He should be using the body. You kind of have to be a little careful, obviously, being a superstar, but I, I think his physical play might come into this for sure. If he starts knocking dudes on their butt, the dude can already skate around you, no problem. If you're on your butt, there's there's no chance. So it looks like they're grinding down a little bit in the corner here, a little bit of back and forth. Yeah, they're going to obviously try to settle into the game a little bit. Brian saying mm-hmm. Edmonton will win. So we got Brian on record for the Oilers. I am actually going Oilers myself as well. I've been really impressed with the Kings, though. A year where they're not even supposed to really, yeah. right, kind of out of nowhere. I talked with, at the beginning of the season, I got to talk with uh, Shalena Goldman. She's a writer for San Jose. Really great, great uh, hockey mind and reporter. And, um, you know, she kind of went in depth on, the progress of LA and they're ahead of schedule in this mm-hmm. kind of refresh that they're doing. So uh, it's been really interesting to see how they're doing all this without Drew Doughty, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is supposed to be like next year, next year, they're supposed to be yeah. doing this stuff or, or then maybe the year after, but here they are. I mean, they're going up against a very high octane offense and I mean, we're playing game seven. So that speaks magnitudes for what they're doing. Ty Jacobs, you're still in the comments and you're on the live stream. I love it. <laughs> I got a multitask. I love it. <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna pop you up. Any, I'm trying to. I try to pop up everybody that that comments here. So, um, mm-hmm. well, we'll see how many viewers we get tonight. But like I was telling Ty before the broadcast, this is just for fun. I like to hop on here. I haven't been able to do as many of my. Uh, you know, I was doing some of the post game streams for the crack in. And I like to do that. Uh, I do a morning cup of Kraken segment. I do that live sometimes in the mornings on the weekends and, and things like that. But kind of going into the off season, I haven't really been able to live stream a whole lot, just putting some update videos together. Uh, so this is this is cool. I want to do a couple of these going through the playoffs. It's great to have Ty and anybody jumping in the chat, drop by. It's a lot of fun. So we're at just about three minutes into the game, still a little bit of back and forth. Uh, looks like Edmonton has the first couple shots there, getting a little bit physical. Mm-hmm. They've got the first... Looks like on the sh- uh, on the on the chart there four hits, so they're off to a you know pretty decent start. Looks like the ice is tilted maybe a little bit towards Edmonton's end or towards LA's end. Sorry, Brian mentioning he said I thought the Boston versus Canes game just proved home ice is a thing. Incredibly tight series. That series was a lot of fun to watch. 
I, I think that's kind of a factor in this game. Also, if you, if you look at the home thing, uh, both these teams are one and two at home. So it's, it's a little bit of maybe an opposite effect here. Yeah, it was just back and forth, back and forth. I knew, and I think I even tweeted at Brian um, during, I think it was the first couple games I said something like, um, you know, Boston's going to have a response. They're going to come home and have a response. And they're probably going to, you know, get back in the series. I, From the beginning, I really thought the Canes were the better team overall. But, uh, yeah, you did see Boston hang in there. They, they did a really good job of kind of playing a little more physical, a little more straight line hockey. And the Canes just looked a little lost at, at times on the road. So moving forward, we're going to have to see the Canes clean that up a little bit on the road. I want to see them a little bit more aggressive going into the second round because it's not going to get any easier from here, right? No. So what I was talking about one and two, I was, I was talking about Kings and Oilers at home, uh, specifically to the Canes. Obviously we saw that being a whole different story. Uh, right. I wouldn't want to play in rally. Those guys were, were going crazy. So <laughs> Ooh, big time shot right there. Mike Smith with a stop. They just popped up on the screen too. Uh, McDavid had 24 minutes in ice time in game six. So he's definitely going to be out there a lot mm-hmm. in this game. And uh, I mean, <laughs> he's at 12 points already in this series. That's two points a game. That's absolutely crazy. And then if you, if you really start digging down into the goals, I think there's like 23, 25 or something like that by Edmonton. And he's involved in roughly 18 of them. So, I mean, a wow. huge piece, you're a superstar doing superstar things. And, and that's what you have to expect from, from his level of player. And Evander Kane, of course, uh, with the, with the uh, <laughs> bulletin board material coming in here. It, there was a little debate. It was whether he was saying game seven or that's how many goals he had. I, I thought he was saying game seven, but that's game seven. Yeah. Pretty sure that's what it was. And then you saw some of the mm-hmm. videos afterwards, like McDavid, he was, uh, he was definitely not thrilled about that at all. Did you see him on the bench? Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, I mean, they're almost polar opposite personality wise. And McDavid is that superstar kind of professional all the time guy. You you can see him get a little emotional and, and frustrated at times, but it's, it's a lot more difficult to catch him in that kind of a moment than it is, you know, a vendor Kane. He's got a reputation yeah. for, for a reason, but those kind of guys, like I'm torn because they're really entertaining. Like they get the fan bases going, they, fire up the social media like crazy like those kind of guys get people talking about your organization whether it be positive or negative any you know conversation is publicity so yeah the old saying about you know all press is good press yeah definitely ups the engagement level Mm -hmm. Uh, saw a little bit of that with the and we'll talk maybe towards intermission about Zadorov uh for calgary and that hit the game last night but uh looks like cassian's Punched over on the bench a little bit here for the Oilers. We're at about 14.32 left on the first period. Uh, Brian also mentioned, he said, kind of agreed, L.A. is completely ahead of schedule. Fantastic effort. So, you know, it's going to be really interesting to see if they continue take taking steps forward next year. Because sometimes you see this, right? Like a young team, they'll take that big... And Calgary did this as well, you know, over mm-hmm. the years. They would have that big kind of jump forward and then two steps back, and then, mm-hmm. you know, almost missed the playoffs, and maybe they're going to trade Johnny Gaudreau, et cetera, et cetera. And so I'm really curious to see how, <laughs> how the Kings do next year. Yeah. You remember when they were going to send Johnny Gaudreau out of town? Was that two mm-hmm. years ago? They were just like, mm-hmm. uh, and then he has a 100-plus points, has a hundred plus point season this year. And, uh, you can't go wrong with Johnny Hockey. They don't call him Johnny Ho- Hockey for nothing. I mean. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I would I would be ecstatic to see a player of his capabilities come to Seattle. But we can we can probably talk about that later on. Yeah, we'll we'll talk a little bit about that in intermissions and as we go to breaks and stuff here, but mm-hmm. uh yeah, I don't think LA has registered a shot yet, if I'm right. Uh I'm not seeing any shots yet. They've had some good chances. I think one that was like a, a really good right on the, the top of the slot there. Mm-hmm. Just went up over the corner a little wide. Well, Jonathan Quick teams. out behind the net. 
Both teams kind of settling in a little bit more here, seeing a little more neutral zone play. Uh, yeah. Was it the other night when you when you sent the... <laughs> we were DMing each other behind the scenes about Mike Smith. And yep, yep. Yeah, he seems like he's just... he's. He's done well statistically, but he has those moments, right, where you're just like, oh, my God. I mean, not to jump on and do like a crack and rant, but I, he, he just has such a, a Chris Drieger, Grubauer kind of feel for me where he gives up either like a, a really bad rebound that just gets slammed home or something kind of trickles through. It's just like, I don't know, you're, you're reliving nightmares and having flashbacks to the whole cracking season here. Right. <laughs> Ooh, I think there's another thing we just saw there that that block shots let's keep an eye on block shots because if you can lay down in front of the puck Edmonton's not going to hit the net <sighs> look at McDavid crash the yeah, net and, holy cow and the Kings you know uh, Todd McClellan <laughs> he mm -hmm. always gets guys to lay down in front of shots and just the battle level from the Kings you've seen towards you know the end of the season and going into the playoffs it's been really impressive uh, we've talked, you know, kind of behind the scenes, you and I, about how McClellan has struggled with adjusting in series and in game in the past. I saw it a lot when he was with the Sharks back in the day, and even to an extent with uh, when he was with the Oilers there for what was that a couple years uh, before you know he he moved on from there. But yeah, it, it's I think he's honestly like I got to give him credit in this series. I, I've seen some pretty good adjustments. I thought when LA, uh, when Edmonton had those couple blowouts in a row, I didn't think LA was going to recover, and they did. They did a really good job. Mm -hmm. So it looks like we're going to break here. Um, take yeah. a couple comments. I'm going to hop yeah. over to the Portland game. Oh right, so that's the other thing we got going: the W WHL Seattle Thunderbirds and uh, Portland Winterhawks. Ty is also a big Portland Winterhawks fan, so. So to say big, <laughs> this, this, this is my first year. Uh, I actually haven't even been here a year, but I grew up uh, in Spokane, Washington, watching the WHL, being a hockey player myself. Like, yeah, I, I grew the like a love of the game there. And now that I've moved to Portland, I, I'm back in Washington State, just on the other side. Actually, kind of like this side better. But uh, I mean, you you can't. It's it's. 15 minutes down the road to go watch some WHL hockey. And I mean, these guys are, are fighting to, you know, live their dreams and become yeah. something. And just this the amount of passion you see on the ice. I love to see it. I will but say yeah, I get, for sure. It, does, it definitely doesn't disappoint going to those games. We used to go to quite a few. Yeah. You get a, a large uh, value for your dollar. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's very entertaining and the games are usually really, really competitive uh, and mm -hmm. pretty good hockey overall. You know, obviously they're, um, you know, they're, they're not professionals, but they're, they're getting there. It's fun to watch. Ew. Brian saying go T-Birds. Oh yeah. So that, that's the fun thing too, is like all of my hockey friends mm -hmm. pull up in Seattle. So I, uh, I changed my, my Twitter to kind of poke at them a little bit. And a lot of them been letting me have it, but that's, that's like the fun part about hockey for me is, you know, growing up hockey, you, you learn to get that thick skin and you talk yeah. a little trash, have a little fun. I love that. Like that's, that's, a part of the game to me. And I think that's kind of what Evander Kane's doing. He's saying, Hey, game seven, baby, let's go. Yeah. It's just I, kind I of like it. that, that little hype, that little like trash talk. That's yeah. part of the game. Yeah. I mean, even if you don't like Evander Kane, the person like mm -hmm. the, um, just the, the drama and the theater there a little bit was, I mm -hmm. thought it was pretty exciting. Actually going back to that again, uh, Brian mentioning Kane is certainly delivered in this series. I think for McDavid, his reaction was also in part to say, it's not enough. You felt yeah. bulletin board material was smart, you know, with the question mark there. So yeah, yeah, you, yeah you're not done, right? Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to take something that you can put in the board uh, for this LA Kings team and get them fired up. Um, so maybe that's where McDavid is like, dude, what are you doing? But, <laughs> uh, I, I think from from a media perspective, you wouldn't expect anything less from somebody like Evander Kane. So I got a little bit of. Not really too much of a scrum there. It looked like they were getting a little little cranky with each other, kind of digging around in the corner here. A little bit of a chop to the back there by Duncan Keith on uh, Trevor Moore, looks like. But Did Kings, we get like a, a self-inflicted high stick there or a team-inflicted? It's something. Kind of they're like they're it. having a little huddle here with the referees. Yeah. 
there was definitely a high stick kind of behind where the camera was. But yeah, I, I see a I, little bit of blood on. Uh, I think it was Euler on Euler. I can't really tell though. I need to see oh, another replay. Friendly Honestly, fire type I, of incident. I, I was watching the other game. Oh, here we go. Here's a good view. So we got a, a nice slash followed up by a little cross check. Oh. Yep, that's friendly fire. Yep, right up into his teammate's face. That sucks. Yeah, that does. <laughs> I played rec league for a few years in Spokane mm -hmm. back in the day. And when I first started, I didn't wear a mask or anything like that because it was just like, you know, I think I was 19 yeah, the... years old and we were just out to have some fun. And I was... Uh, <laughs> Heavily encouraged by my now wife, but girlfriend at the time, she was like, you're an idiot. You need to put a mask on. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I did in that next game, uh, I took two pucks to the face and a stick. So I'm really glad that I listened to her because I would have had probably a couple missing teeth and maybe a, maybe a fresh scar. All right. So here we go. We got. No. No penalty. Obviously, I mean, we we saw it. We we shouldn't anticipate seeing a penalty there. Yeah. He uh, hopefully, the NHL officials in Toronto aren't all upset, and they can they can focus on this game. <laughs> you never know with the refs these days. He had that initial hesitation there as he kind of skated over. I was like, is he actually going to call something here? But it looks like mm -hmm. so the Kings are kind of pushing back a little bit here. Uh, Edmonton opened with the first few shots on goal. Looks like LA's. Digging back a little bit now, four shots for them. And uh, they're definitely winning the faceoffs right now. They just won another one there. To, to Ooh. Good possession. Oh, that was a really close, really close chance there on the point shot there. I think, was that Duck, Duncan Keith that shot that? Uh, it looked like it, yeah. Yeah, Brian, Brian saw it too. He said friendly fire. Mm -hmm. I got two cameras see. tonight. I'm good. I get mixed up with my cameras there, so this is I'm practicing a little bit here. And Edmonton in the offensive zone is just something to watch. Especially these lines. Yeah, it's pretty intriguing. Once Connor McDavid revs up the engine and he starts skating around like a crazy man, I just don't know how he moves so fast with the puck. Like it's just amazing to watch him. And then mm -hmm. you've got a complimentary guy like Leon Dreisaitl or Evander Kane or, you know, whoever's on the line with them at the time. And those guys are still able to keep up. It's pretty amazing. I just, I'm always blown away when I tune in and I watch Connor McDavid. He's just like chopping the skates. I can't <sighs> believe how fast he moves. Let's go. 45 seconds left to go in the second period. 1-1. One, one. Portland just tied it up. Okay. I just happened to click over right at the perfect time. So they're in uh, Seattle tonight, correct? So they, they kind of had Kent. a weird schedule. They did uh, game one in Kent because there was a graduation going on here. And then two and oh, three God. here. And then four back in Seattle. And then now we have five here. And yeah, it's a 1-1 one -one game. I mean, these have been some great games. Uh, maybe the last one here, game three, wasn't so great. Uh, it was totally got destroyed and I was there to watch it. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's still fun though. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. King's got another nice shot there from the top of the zone, kind of between the dots, uh, top of the circles there. I look they're, at the people outside. Oh, yeah. So, like, the Leafs fans, then they have their watch parties outside. I think this would be something really easy to do outside of Climate Pledge. You have tons of room to do it. Oh, totally. You might, you might have people, like, battling it out to get up. By the windows, we call it tight wide terrace. I don't know what anybody else calls it, but yeah. if you stand, if you stand up there, you can see like eighty percent of the ice, uh, and then you can see obviously the the twins, uh, what's going on, the scores, all that stuff, everything that's up there. So that would definitely yeah, that be, would way be cool. really cool if they if they did something like that. Because you know, I uh, mean, the arena is going to be sold out at that point anyway, so you may as well just oh, open yeah. the windows up and you know, I mean, I mean I think they, didn't they do some stuff on the on the twins that were. Uh, kind of joking about the tightwad terrace and the people. Like, I think they had, like held a sign up or something like that at one of the games. It was kind of funny. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've gone out there and like when uh, ECH does their post games, I've gone out mm -hmm. there and like stood in the window and waved at RJ when he's doing his section and stuff like that. But <laughs> he sees he yeah, you with his binoculars. If you uh, 
if you sit there and you pay attention during the game, there's there's always a silhouette of a, a person, if not a couple there, uh, you know, watching. Why not? You can see yeah. most of it. But shout yeah, out to, that, shout out to or shout out to uh, ECH, by the way. Love those guys. Yeah. go on and on about those guys so much fun tweeting he was saying that he had a he was like in a family thing and he wasn't able to watch any of the games so far today so i was like well maybe we'll get like a a triple overtime or something so you can join late but yeah i I, I can relate like you gotta you know family first right Mm -hmm. i think it was something for like his sister or something like that yeah but so he's a you know, coming over from a Pittsburgh background. So oh, right. uh, okay. us being superstitious kind of hockey folk, uh, he's he's found that when he turns the game on, all of a sudden bad stuff happens to Pittsburgh. So <laughs> we've, we've kind of relied on each other. Me coming from, a, 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 you know, being a Colorado fan basically my whole life since 96. Uh, so kind of like when I first got into NHL hockey, real heavy. But I'll be sending him like, Oh dude, shot on goal. You know, <laughs> this is going on. The, you know, yeah. the ice is tilted this way. You know, Pittsburgh's playing super smart attacking zone, so on and so forth. Or we'll talk about like maybe some defensive schemes or something like that. And mm-hmm. he's been relying on me to kind of keep him up to date on, on the score. And I'm sure he's got tons of friends that are sending him just as much stuff as we all get kind of blown up and blow each other up. <laughs> on stuff. It's so much fun. Like, I didn't think that, you know, hockey Twitter would be such a, yeah, it was kind of brutal. McDavid coming in the back there. Yeah. Getting physical down in the corner there. He, he's a big dude. Like, oh, here he yeah. goes by himself over here. Jonathan quick, better panic. Ooh, shut down. Yeah. It looks like the intensity starting to kick up a little bit. You can see that pace picking up. Yeah. We're going under right at about eight minutes, 20 seconds left right now. And, uh, oh, another big hit on the side there in the physicality, definitely ratcheting up. So this is what oh, is that, I was waiting you to got see. <laughs> dry sidle and McDavid out there at the same time, the desperation line, even though it's really not desperate right now. But Yeah, I mean, <sighs> why not try it a few, a few times throughout the evening, throw them out there, gives the mm-hmm. Kings a little bit of a different look, maybe uh, cause some, some panic and some problems to deal with. McDavid yeah. just dealing right now behind the net. Puck on his stick up top. LA so far doing a pretty good job of keeping everybody kind of the outside. Uh, They're set up in their defensive scheme really, really well. And they're able to get the clear right there. So So that's going to be an icing, right? And um, it didn't, like you said, they kept everything kind of on the edge there. Pretty good job. Did feel like they were maybe scrambling around just a little bit, but uh, yeah, pretty good cleaning it up. Limiting the chances when you got guys out there like Drysidle and McDavid, Kane, watch out. Oh, Brian said Portland up three to one in the series. Yes, Is that that's correct. Question. So they've won every game that I haven't been to, so I am home. <laughs> <laughs> and that would actually be kind of a, a fun thing when we start talking about Kraken. Uh, I had a, a pretty rough reputation until very, very, very late in the season. So we, we can get into the tank commander, as my buddies were calling me. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Todd, the tank commander. Seattle Sports uh, Diaries logged in. What's up? How you doing over there? I actually got to join uh, Mike's podcast last night. He had me over, gener- generous enough to, to let me drop by, and uh, he does a great job over there. And uh, I, I've said it before, but he's like an encyclopedia Britannica for Seattle sports. So check out his channel, mm-hmm. Seattle Sports Diaries. Uh, support those local content creators. He's been at it for quite a while. He does a great job and big Mariners guy. So maybe uh, if you're still logged in here for a little bit, maybe you could give us a little Mariners update today in the chat. And uh, we could we could talk a little bit about that at intermission, Mike, if you want to. But Brian echoing Ty, the tank commander. Yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's a thing now, but we're going to have to get <laughs> rid of that next year. We can't have, we can't have you losing so- all these games next year. I was at the home closer where Drieger got the shutout. So I have, yeah, I have yeah. that. Right. And then I also uh, was in the overtime win. So I've seen a, I haven't, at that point, I hadn't seen a win in regulation, but I had the overtime win. And that was the one game that you and I were like trading pride flags and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. And then for work and everything. Yeah, that was, that was actually funny. So 
you and I kind of have this little like, oh, is that a goal? Yes, it has to be. Jonathan Quick doesn't look stoked, uh, but nobody's celebrating. I just happened to look up and I see Jonathan Quick down. Yeah, I don't think it's a, oh boy. Went right through his legs, through the crease. The Kings kind of clean it up. Wow. Get back over to the corner. Oh. Sitting right there for Hyman to potentially knock it in, but the Kings cleaned it up pretty clutch. Uh, right <laughs> Almost was one yeah. to nothing. Yeah, that's, that's something you don't want to give Edmonton too many of those opportunities. But like I was saying, uh, I mean, you and I, we would we'd be messaging and like, meet me at the rum bar and we'd run and like, right. oh my gosh, what's going on? Like, oh, and then we'd run back and like hang out with our yeah. families and, and watch the game. Like that, that kind of stuff is so much fun. Uh, I mean, yeah. then we had the, the second period intermission where we go meet with the 32 crew and yeah, wasn't that great? That, that makes the experience like that much more. Cause a lot of these games I'm going by myself. Like I don't have a problem going yeah. by myself to a hockey game, but if you got some buddies there to watch the game with, it's a lot more fun. Oh, for sure. Yeah, and it, and it's good to see like the familiar faces, you know, people you mm-hmm. you've seen there, and then some of the new people too that mm-hmm. had come in from out of town. It was just really cool, like kind of a, you know, tying a bow on the end of the season, and and I had actually got to meet some of those people for the first time, in, in person, right? So like Alicia Crank, she had stopped by the show early in the season, and it was really good to meet her. Amazing, amazing woman in the community. You know, check out her Twitter account and all the things she does for Seattle women's pro hockey. And uh, yeah, it, it was just like, for me, it was a kind of culmination of, you know, all the things happening, all the people getting to know, you know, through the internet, but then in, now in real life and COVID kind of starting to wane, it's still a concern for a lot of people. I understand that, but um, yeah, things are definitely different now than they were at the beginning of the season. And it's been great to see that. I, I just popped up uh, Brian's other mm-hmm. comment here. I saw this comment. Yeah, he says, honestly, I don't think people are talking enough about the St. Louis Blues this playoff season. And I would definitely agree because I, I kind of got onto the uh, Minnesota Wild Kool-Aid uh, train mm-hmm. there. And I really thought they were going to get it done this year. They look good early in the series. But man, Craig Berube, he just knows how to get his guys going. And the Blues really, I mean, they really just handed it to Minnesota late in the series. Yeah. Yeah, I thought maybe Flurry would be the ticket, but I mean, I, I watched. You know, what was that? The the Winter Classic they played, mm-hmm. uh, and then a couple other games throughout the season where they played, and I was like, St. Louis had their number, so I, I was kind of concerned about that coming into the series. Uh, obviously, making some acquisitions through the trade deadline, bringing in Flurry. I mean, you have a, a Stanley Cup champion now between the pipes. Like, I thought that was going to be a big deal. Uh, yeah. Their defense definitely could have helped them out a lot more than they did, but yeah, it felt I mean, like they started leaning a little bit more towards their their firepower on offense, and and like you said, they just kind of yeah. lost focus on defense. I'm not really sure. I was also a little surprised too because they went down the stretch. Talbot played really well down. Wasn't he like 13 0 and two or something? Just ridiculous mm-hmm. down the stretch, and then they immediately go uh, to Flurry, right? <laughs> And, yeah, and then I, they switch back to Talbot cold on the road. I'm just like, what? I I don't know. I don't really know why I, they did that, but I think there's there's something going on behind the scenes. I saw something. Uh, I don't know who it was posted by. One of the the reporters for the Wild talking about like they need to rebuild the relationship with Talbot, or he's probably going to go somewhere else. Kind of a conversation. Uh, yeah. I, I don't I don't know what happened there, but yeah, just something definitely was just like. And here comes Flurry. You put him in net. I mean, everybody. I was, I was. I'm not a Minnesota Wild fan at all, and I was all about, mm-hmm. you know, flower power or or wildflower. Let's go. I mean, how right. can you and not it, like that? <laughs> well, and it's because you've seen him make that difference in the playoffs year after year, mm-hmm. and, and the amazing runs with, uh, you know, with Pittsburgh and Vegas, and just on and on and on. And so you you've come to expect that he is getting towards the end of his career, but. Uh, I don't know. I thought he played good towards the beginning of the series. I thought mm-hmm. that last game he played before they went to Talbot, it wasn't a good game, but I thought, like you said, the defense was starting to let him down a little bit in general and yeah. they didn't improve. Ooh, close chance there. Yeah. That they was didn't improve super the next close. game either. No, I mean, he's, he's a future hall of famer. He knows what he's doing between the net, like between the pipes. <laughs> I, I just think, you know, I don't think the series would have went as long 
based on if you had Talbot in there. If you watch those series uh, during the regular season, St. Louis had Talbot's number over and yeah. over and over. And the Winter Classic, I thought it was like Talbot came out with like the stocking cap. But uh, <laughs> I see the comments yeah. about being in <laughs> Portland. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if he see- caught the whole like, I'm new to Portland kind of thing. So <laughs> we, maybe we can make up a little bit later. If you want to hate me, I grew up a Spokane Chiefs fan. Yeah, but there uh, yeah. And there's a, there's a whole bunch of fun part about that because my dad's still a Spokane Chiefs fan. And then my uncle uh, on my dad's side also, he lives in Tri-Cities. So I lived in the Tri-Cities for a little while also. So he's an American fan. So we've all kind of just, we have a little group chat of our, our family stuff. Him And we just talk trash the whole time about, you know, <laughs> hockey. So uh, I've been sending them like, Portland Winter Hawks playoff wallpapers and fun things like that, just kind of poking at them because, you know, obviously yeah. Spokane got swept and Tri Cities also not so great. So we're, I've been having really, my fun while I can. We're pretty lucky in Washington to have so many uh, WHL teams, right? So you've got yeah. Everett, you've got Spokane, yep. you've got Seattle, um, not a WHL team, but Wenatchee has the Wild. Uh, so, I mean, we're. I don't think people realize there's so many hockey teams in this state and have been so for such a long time. You've got a lot of people that really do understand the game and have been mm-hmm. rooting on teams for many, many years. And uh, a lot of those communities, a lot of, you know, good, good uh, organiz- hockey organizations for kids coming up and learning to play hockey. I mean, I remember playing out at Eagles Ice Arena in Spokane. Yeah. Back in the day and you know, <laughs> that's awesome. Out at Liberty Lake yep. when that place was still open. Um, I yep. don't think it's a nice yep. arena anymore, but yeah, no. those were good good times. I I still I haven't kept up real well with the people I used to play with out there, but uh, a lot of good memories. You know, I think it's back in mm-hmm. early two thousands. If I'm gonna date myself a little bit, but <clears throat> oh, Brian said Ty is now a spec. Ty is now on a spectator heater of sorts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're a busy man. Bouncing back and forth, trying to watch multiple games. Okay, we have intermission, <laughs> second intermission for the Portland Seattle game. That's good. All right, what's and the score then? Oh, uh, it's one one. So Portland okay. tied it up. Uh, Seattle got on the board pretty early in the first, and then kind of had their their normal chess match play that they have, uh, and then got into the second. Forty five seconds left to go. Portland sinks one. I think it was kind of a like a odd man rush, maybe two on zero oh kind of thing. Uh, mm-hmm. Just got that rebound and spanked it home, from what I saw. Uh, I'm not watching this game super in depth, so I'm just kind of assuming based on kind of what was happening out of the corner of my eye. But uh, yeah, we're tied up one-one. I can officially see that. I'm looking at it, but yeah, okay. Yeah, this series actually has been a, quite a bit of fun. I mean, obviously, we've we with the I five rivalry, I think is what they call it. Uh, Portland, Seattle. Yeah. Uh, you go to you go to you know Seattle's arena, and it's Portland sucks all the time, and it's hilarious. I love it. Like again, that thick skin hockey, like talk trash to me let me have it when i'm in your arena i love it but also like they they're also super super welcoming uh when you come in they're not just you know there to to give you a hard time if you need to find something or something they'll help you out and then i, I try to do the same thing you know when they come down here to to portland to bmc and i don't know it's, it's a fun rival you gotta have stuff like that like that makes the game you know that much more fun to watch and be a part of you're actually a yeah. part of it rather than you know just sitting there Ooh. Look at all that traffic in front of Mike Smith there. <laughs> Did you see that one that uh, the Calgary Flames and Dallas Stars, the the traffic in front, the line in front of uh, the goal? Yeah, like a perfect night. line too. <laughs> it was hilarious. I retweeted yeah. that one. I forget who tweeted it, but it was uh, – I'll have to go look. But oh, Yeah, Mark's Mike- getting a good look at everybody's butt. Mike, Mike was saying he could jump on the show. To, so the problem is, is I don't use StreamYard, so I'm I'm not able to like adjust my templates on the fly. So I I'm not at that level yet. Um, we're gonna work on that. So I'll get a little better at that. Maybe we can add additional guests in show here, uh, in the future. But I'm that'd gonna, be fun. I'm gonna have to say sorry tonight, because uh, it's already set up. <laughs> I've reached my technical capabilities for uh, this season, <laughs> but yeah. Yeah, Mike uses. I think he uses Streamyard, so you can you can basically just like it pops them mm-hmm. in there on the fly. It's pretty cool. So I'm just using like um, you know, overlays and and OBS, and uh, it's not as flexible, but you know I'm getting there. It's been a little bit of a work in progress. It's a lot of fun though, because I'm kind of a geek and I like messing with it. It's impressive yeah, what you can do on this stuff now. Ryan said the traffic line was hilarious. 
I'll see if I can find that tweet and maybe put it up at uh, intermission here. It's mm-hmm. definitely worth a look again for sure. <laughs> Uh, you and talk my, about traffic in front of the net. There's there's not much better than that image there. No. So I don't, I don't under, know if you, you take that to your squirts team and be like, this is how you do it, but it was a <laughs> it was a good example. Well, I mean, it was pretty obvious Dallas was trying to do that most of the night and just stacked sets like that and then trying to get some lateral movement through the oh. zone low. But uh yeah, so we're going under a minute thirty here. Uh yeah. Edmonton. Still ahead in shots, nine to six. And physicality, at least hit wise on the stat sheet, pretty even right now. Again, Kings, a little bit more dominant in the face off. They've won 10 face offs. So that'll be something to keep an eye on, especially down the stretch. You always see those tricky little face off goals. Something worth pointing out also mm-hmm. Connor McDavid is back playing defense. Oh. Yeah. I, oh. <laughs> uh. I remember the year they had Brent Burns playing forward in San Jose. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was fun. What a what I mean, that's another thing we could talk about too with the the crack and stuff is I actually went to San Jose uh because of my job. Mm-hmm. And I went to a whole bunch of Sharks games while I was there, including the one where they beat the Kraken. But yeah, Brent Burns, I mean, you couldn't like okay, you could. You could do Joy Thornton and there's a whole bunch of other like iconic defensemen, but currently on the ice. Yeah. Brett Burns, like, holy cow. He's a lot of fun to watch. If if you go to a game, just watch him in warm-ups. Not you, Ty, mm-hmm. just, you know, people that maybe haven't seen him. But uh, watch him in warm-ups. Watch him just throughout the game, the way he plays, the intensity, the way he can skate and move with the puck. Really, really impressive. And then, you know, on on that same team, Eric Carlson for years, just incredible talent. I have heard a few rumors and from a few people Mm -hmm. that it sounds like potentially those guys might be on the move and the Sharks kind of in a lot of churn, right? So Doug Wilson stepping down as GM. Um, I was going to check in again with Shalena. It didn't work out. We, I was busy. She's busy. You know, it's off season now. It's hard to, to get people sometimes, but, uh, yeah, I really wanted to kind of get a a pulse for what's going on down there. Right. And it's going to be really interesting. I don't I don't know if they'll trade in division or in conference, but it'd be really interesting to see if Bernsey or Carlson are on the move out of San Jose. Any thoughts on that, Ty? I mean, I've heard the same rumors myself. Uh the thing with San Jose is if you if you pull up cap friendly, it's uh very interesting. What is he saying? He said a millionaire. Looks like a millionaire that yeah. wants to look homeless. Yeah. That's good. I, that, 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 good. that beard is like, it's kind of what I was saying, like Joe Thornton kind of has the same thing going on. Just just yeah. big old monster beard, like a defensive icon. But yeah, uh, Burns is, is so loved by the San Jose community. I think that would be kind of a, a sad breakup for some of the fans there for sure. But yeah, that would be tough. He'd I be mean, a contributor anywhere he goes. Just kind of watching him in the games that I got to see him, you know, going against like a high powered Vegas team. You know, I can't believe I just said that, but uh <laughs> watching him you know make good decisions see that you know down ice passes and stuff like that i mean he's got some good guys to feed the puck to and he's still doing a great job like i would i would take him on the crack and maybe not in the the contract and paying what he's getting paid now but i would never say no to brett burns right so we're uh are we in intermission or we're 24 yeah. seconds from it or maybe this just has not oh i'm but i'm in intermission yeah 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 okay i think this just didn't update that's okay. So um, let's take a quick look at, and we are going to do a quick little break here just so Ty can catch his breath and I can grab a quick soda or something like that. But, you know, maybe maybe a two-minute quick break. But uh, So let's talk a little bit about some of the earlier games tonight, right? We had three game sevens today. This one's going on. The first one of the day, the Boston Bruins and Carolina Hurricanes. We got into it just a little bit, but... Um, Let's take a look at the stats from that game and uh, just a quick recap. So I thought that, you know, the Canes had a good start. They had that nice first goal. I think there was about a minute left in the first period. <laughs> Brian mentioning that Vegas Golden Knights reference. Uh, <laughs> Tuvo, Tuvo Teravainen, he scored his, uh, I think, second of the playoffs. Kind of got things going. Max Domi on the assist, Jacob Slavin, Slavin and um, so kind of getting things going. 
They go into the second period. Uh, another great play by Max Domi, a good four check down in the corner low. They got it, got it back up to the point there on that shot. It kind of deflected and bounced over to, to Domi and that made it two to nothing. What, what were your thoughts at that point when Domi's starting to take things over a little bit for the Kings <sighs> and the Bruins go down two to nothing at that point? Yeah. I mean, Brian and I were kind of talking about this when it was getting started, obviously being excited because I was, uh, I'm not necessarily a Boston fan. I think is the nice way to put it, right? But <laughs> which is funny because they're they're kind of you know character Marshan off the ice. I don't I don't think he's that bad of a person, but on the ice, obviously he's he's very popular for a reason. But I think that game, uh, I was kind of getting worried about watching, you know, the the penalties. Uh, if you look at the advanced stats in this series or that series, I should say uh, that when you put Boston on the power play, that's when they were winning games. So mm-hmm. we were, Brian and I were kind of discussing that. And I think they did a, a good job of being disciplined and staying out of the box, uh, doing what they needed to do in that first period. So. Yeah. So then they go, Oh, I think it was about, let's see here. About another five minutes into the second there. So it was four minutes in then five minutes in the Bruins kind of a quick response, right? They come off the sideboards, the center it uh, tips off of, off of McAvoy there, um, right over to DeBrusque, he puts it home, Bruins on the board, they're trying to get that comeback going, right? And then after that, um, I think it was just about 10 minutes, let's see here in the notes, 10 minutes to go in the second, uh, really big opportunity for the Bruins, they hit the post. Yeah. Um, and then tell us so what that, happens that, after that. <laughs> that DeBrusque goal got the Bruins fired, they saw the light, and they attacked. Like the ice went <laughs> in their favor yeah. and it was it was a, just an onslaught what you would expect from from that team it, honestly it felt like you know they were going to tie it up and mm-hmm. it was it was heading right there to the net and then boom hits the post and then you come back down the other way uh, mm-hmm. and, you know just a few seconds later wheel they kind of wheel, canes wheel <laughs> it down around the boards and it gets centered to Domi. He's kind of streaking through the slot right there he fires it puts the canes up 3 to 1 that was his second of the game and his third point of the night in that one. He was just having a day. Max mm-hmm. Domi. I think his dad was in the crowd, right? Yeah. I was ready to, to give my hat a yeet. <laughs> so he did he but did it didn't not happen. End, yeah, he didn't end up with the hat trick. I remember watching uh Ty Domi when I grew up and like a freaking pit bull. That guy would just what a monster. Yeah. tear people apart. And maybe that's not fair to to um, compare it to pit bulls because I know those uh, those dogs get a bad rap for a lot of reasons. So I don't, mm-hmm. I don't want to make people mad with the the animal reference there. But uh, he was he was definitely a tough guy, and uh, Max definitely learned from him. A little bit of a different player. He's got a little more scoring touch to him. But uh, do you remember mm-hmm. watching Ty Domi growing up? Oh apps like if you talk about you know top five enforcers maybe top three enforcers of all time you have to talk about Ty Dome. they would just destroy people all the time like maybe not the the cleanest things or anything like that but uh he was yeah. definitely on the fence of punch you in the face rather than the skillet up generation that we have going on right now <laughs> right, right yeah a total yeah. monster everybody knew his name everybody knew when he was on the ice and if you didn't well he found you <laughs> he he just had that switch that would flip and it didn't mm-hmm. matter how big the guy was that he was fighting or any of that he was going to destroy that that person or that player yep brian saying i yep. still have nightmares of ty domi 3500 penalties in minutes i don't is that uh i don't know who has the record but that's got to be up there it's it's up there that. i'm not sure who has the record either yeah okay so i promised mike we'll do a quick little uh We'll highlight his comments here on the Mariners, and then we're going to take a quick two-minute break and then hop back in here as we go into the second period. So uh, we got a 4 to nothing Mets win today. The Mariners continue to cause us heart issues, according to Mike. So I didn't get to watch any of that game today. I would like to see the Mariners hit the ball a little bit more. So, often. I thought this was going to be their, their year to make the playoffs. Seattle Thunderbirds just scored and are now – in the lead in the third period. Oh my gosh. Uh, seven, 17 and a half minutes to go. Nice. It's a little, it, it's, a little... it's a must win for them. And I would love to see a little bit more hockey in this series. So I'm, I'm not super sad. 
a little bit of a comeback and uh good job by the Thunderbirds there. Oh, it was Mike a, also mentioned he said K Hart is good play. K Hart's five. So that's K Hart's one of his co hosts. He's five for five in guessing the playoff series. Need to go to Vegas with that guy. Yeah, good for him. I mean, I need to take a look at my bracket. I've done okay, but I'm not five for five. I think I've missed um Are we talking so five for five and I chose, you know, the sweep in Colorado, this many games here, and then seven on every other one? I don't I know anybody that put game seven five times. Yeah, I don't I don't know. Maybe we can have him clarify on that. But we were going through some of the the picks and matchups last night. I can't remember them all right now, mm-hmm. but uh K Hart's a big Ducks fan. So he's kinda on the sidelines this year with the rest of us cracking fans and uh watching the other teams go through. Trevor Zegris. Oh That's okay, all I so gotta say. That oh, wasn't man. a final. He he was mentioning that was the current score. So the Mariners drove yeah. in a run, so there it's four to one. Let me pop up that score so I can actually talk intelligently to what's going on outside of the uh, the hockey tonight. But yeah, thanks for the updates, Mike. Thanks for dropping by. We appreciate having you in the chat. It's always fun to talk with him. Okay, so Ty, let's take a quick two minute break. Um, we're gonna be right back. We're gonna talk going into the second period here. Keep the matchup going. Uh, grab a quick refreshment. Grab your popcorn. And if you want to leave a, a request for Ty to play a song on the guitar, just leave that in the comments. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So we'll like be logistically, right back. that would be a nightmare. <laughs> it would sound great. I would, I would. I would be very impressed if you could do that. <laughs> okay. So we'll, <laughs> we're gonna we'll bust right out some Mary had a little lamb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll be right, right back. Just a couple minute break.
back. We're heading towards the end of the first intermission here. Edmonton Oilers, LA Kings, Game 7, still 0-0. Zero to zero. Uh, Been joined tonight with a special guest, Ty Jacobs, at Sea Kraken Dude. Really great, really great having you along tonight for the ride. I was trying to get the window open. It's a little hot in here. I got all my lights on. It was actually warm today for the first time in a while. I don't know if you're enjoying this freezing cold spring, but... <laughs> Not the greatest weather for working in the yard. I was I was told that this is what it's like all winter time, and now we get it in spring instead. So, <laughs> yeah, it's been extraordinarily cold here and rainy. I was kind of hoping it'd warm up here soon, but I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Today was pretty nice, but it got windy, and uh, yeah, I didn't get outside much because I was watching Game Sevens all day. Mm. Whoops. Okay, so yeah, let's it was take a quick look. Seventy-four here. and sunny here. Hard to complain. Oh, nice. Okay, so there there was the Evander Kane coming into tonight. I wanted to, <laughs> to talk a little bit about uh, Matty Beneers, right? First season with the Kraken. He also won that uh, Carl Isaacson Award for Scholastic Achievement, Athletic Ability. Really great player that the Kraken have been able to acquire and develop and now bring up into the lineup here at the end of the season. What were kind of your thoughts on Matty Beneers? What did I mean? Obviously, you probably liked what you saw, but what were your initial takeaways from the end of the year here? Uh, I think with Maddie, my approach to him was don't get too excited. Uh, I didn't yeah. want to, you know, oh my gosh, we have, you know, a big time star on our hands. I just wanted to come in, let him, you know, get used to being a professional hockey player, you know, get into the rhythm of what you eat, how you do things with the players, where you're supposed to be. I mean, I, I saw, you know, Twitter posts where he's taking public transportation to get games and stuff like that. Like, yeah, just wanted him to come in, you know, figure out how things work in the NHL and then go into the next season. What he did is he showed up and I was actually in attendance for his, his first game in climate pledge. And he came right. out and just, I mean, nine points, 10 games. Like he, a lot of the time looks like probably the best skater we have out there, you know, if not, you know, second best. Uh, he just seemed totally like he impressed. Just really, really, really comfortable. Like mm -hmm. more so than I thought he should be. That yeah, yeah, yeah. It was. I mean, and that's good. I was just like blown away. It. I mean, he's just out there kind of dealing and skating all over mm -hmm. and doing his thing. It's great to see that. Yeah, I seen him out multiple times uh, before the game. Just kind of out, bouncing pucks off the boards, getting comfortable in the building. You know, getting in that groove for game time. And, I mean, yeah. he's a smart kid. He definitely knows knows what he needs to do and i think he's he's executing really well so far uh, yeah it's gonna be fun to see him come along and then and you know see who they compliment him with and just as yeah. they build things and, and go forward can't wait to see everything that's going to happen we're getting yeah getting close to puck drop in the second here looks like they're doing the typical uh interview the coach right now mcclellan in between there uh with the interview so I think we're just about to get back to live action here. So um, yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about some of this stuff as we go into breaks and then down into in the next intermission. But uh, so what what were your takeaways from that first period, Ty? What do you want to see in the next uh, few minutes here from each team as we start the second period off now? I mean, it's, it's really hard to say because I've been bouncing back and forth between the, the Portland and Seattle game. So far, what I've seen though, uh, if you're LA, you just got to keep weathering the storm here and then take your opportunities when you got them. Looks like they've done a fairly decent job of kind of keeping Edmonton to the outside uh, mm -hmm. in the zone, which is going to be critical for this. Give give quick, you know, those sight lines to the puck where it's coming from. So far, pretty decent in that aspect. But Edmonton, I mean, their their whole name of the game is points, 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 points. So uh, yeah. you don't want to rely on Mike Smith putting up a zero on that scoreboard. Right. To kind of to jump in and get get something going here, and, and I think you, you get a goal. I mean, you, the the statistic is what seventy five percent of the time the first goal in a, a game seven wins it. Yeah, you, you start factoring that in with the whole place is going to erupt uh, when that happens. It could be huge if they can get it done. Yeah, it really feels like I mean we're getting into a very critical portion of the game here. Obviously, as you get towards the halfway point. Uh, like you Ooh. mentioned, 75% of the time. Ooh, see, there's those face-offs, right? Yeah. 
that face off McDavid backs up and just blasts it on that. That's at least quick had a good light line of sight to the, to the shot. It's one thing I was trying to tell some of the, the friends that I took this year that were new to the game, like mm-hmm. sit down and make sure you see the face offs happen because uh, I don't have any stats on it, but it, but it happens every game you see set up off of a face off and a goal and it's usually bang, bang. So I try to yeah. encourage my friends to like, okay, here we go. We're got a face off coming. You really want to pay attention if you don't want to miss a goal. <laughs> mm-hmm. I mean, it would inevitably just, happen, but we had that happen in the playoffs. I can't remember what game it was, but it was just mm-hmm. like bang, bang. It was like five seconds and it was a goal. Uh, I think it was yesterday. I'm not sure what game it was. But I remember being all excited about it. Audio is so another coming through here. Kings, yeah, they wins that they win that face off down in Edmonton zone. We're mm-hmm. about a minute in now into the second period. Kind of feel that chess match happening, like Ty yeah. was just alluding to. And I really think the longer that goes on, the more that's gonna play into Los Angeles' favor. You don't really want to I don't think Edmonton wants to mess around with this one to nothing, two to one type of game. They need to get aggressive here. That's not Edmonton hockey. They don't win by one goal. Ooh, yeah. McDavid. Oh yeah, came right up the left side. There's that speed yeah. again. We talked about that earlier tonight. Obviously, you know, if you if you watch hockey at all, you know how fast McDavid is, but it's worth re emphasizing because he's like a lightning bolt coming through the zone there, just unreal speed. Have you ever seen that guy, like, the thighs on him? The meme mm-hmm. with, the, like, hockey players trying to put jeans on? Just because usually the guys that are in the league have some pretty massive thighs. Yeah. <laughs> Edmonton putting a pretty good uh, press on here. Kings trying to hold him off a little bit. They've got 11 shots now, Edmonton does. And we're just under 18 I minutes mean, left. So far... You got classic Jonathan Quick right here, though. He's he's where he needs to be, doing what he needs to do. He's very active in his crease, paying attention. He's he's got eyes on puck. This is exactly what you want Jonathan Quick to be doing. Yeah, he's looking pretty good. I, I thought he's he's played fairly solid through the whole period. Oh. You know, obviously, those two games that got a little bit out of hand, but I think we like might have puck, a power play here. Yeah, puck just went over the glass. So looks like Edmonton's. I was just about to mention no power plays yet. Yeah, and here we go. Edmonton's going to get the first one of the game. This is where you can really see the ice tilt. If Edmonton scores on this, it's going to be really ugly for LA. Again, there's McDavid oh. coming up the left side with that speed. Yeah. It's just unbelievable. And uh, uh, it, it tipped a glass. Did it? Yeah. So they're we'll see take what they look. do. Was that Fletcher? I didn't catch who it was. So they'll get, I mean, that's the good thing about review is they will get it right. You don't want these mm-hmm. to end up, especially these type of penalties where, I mean, he's just trying to clear it up the glass. I mean, yeah, this this is, get yeah, this is a pivotal moment in the game. I don't, I don't think this will be a penalty, but you see, they definitely hit the, uh, the glass before it went out. Oh, Stetcher, not Fletcher. Sorry about yeah. that. You don't watch LA Kings all the time? Come on. <laughs> I mean, I do the best I can. Uh, I watch I a lot of hockey. I can have yeah. I can have my wife come in here and vouch for that. But uh, yeah, yeah. The only players yeah. you've heard me talk about are like long time, like staples on the team. Like Jonathan Quick's been around forever. Yeah. Kopitar, uh, like oh, I here do, we go. I do keep nope. pretty good track of them though. Mm-hmm. Just seems like LA you, can't mount any pressure right now in the in their offensive zone. Edmonton I think quick out. You do a season of, of fantasy hockey and you learn the league real quick. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's so much work though. It's every single day. You know, I Ooh, used to do shot. a lot more fantasy sports uh back in the day. I've kind of I've lost interest in it just a little bit. I still do football every year. That's a lot of fun. But yeah, I can't imagine trying to do a sport that has games every other night. And I know some guys that do like MLB uh, fantasy leagues, and that is a grind for sure. So, 
<laughs> got a you couple see of, chat <laughs> yeah a couple of you guys? funny comments and here we have <laughs> hugh jazz with the very creative username i like it he says who are you i'm i'm sasquatch nhl who are you you uh <laughs> glad to have you by though <laughs> if this is your first time dropping by hey hit that subscribe button for me hit that like button and then we got <laughs> bubby <laughs> bubby watts saying oh hey do you guys do you guys watch hockey oh <laughs> watching hockey right so, now this is my first game though yeah, I've, never, <laughs> I've never never really watched before so we're brand brand new we're in seattle we've never seen a game but yeah <laughs> no thanks guys seriously though for, for stopping by dropping some comments in there uh we like to have fun over here too so <laughs> we watch hear me this is a, a grind for sure yeah definitely the nhl postseason is a grind I think that's what they're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> oh man. So thanks guys for uh popping in the chat there. That's awesome. <laughs> Says this is not your first game, you liar. Yeah, you you know. I think I might know who these guys are, so that, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> you hop your burner account and harass us a little bit. I would do something yeah. like that. A little chat raid. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought they could have done better with Bubby Watts. Like, that's, I don't know what's going on with that username. But but thanks for supporting the channel. Okay, so we're at 16 minutes left in the second. LA Edmonton, 0-0. Zero, zero. Uh, both teams trying to find a little bit of an edge here. Kings with a little bit of a pushback. Edmonton had that kind of a quick streak of... Uh, Offensive flashes there, but I don't know. Kings look like they're they're playing pretty sturdy tonight, like you said, Jonathan Quick standing tall in net, and uh, they've got that experienced player, Ansi Kopitar. He's kind of being highlighted there on the camera. Uh, you know, they're playing without Drew Doughty, uh, but yeah, I I don't think the Kings are going to shy away from this one at all. Edmonton still with the edge and shots there, twelve. To nine, uh, physicality right up there, about 22 hits for LA, 19 for Edmonton. Kind of a lower shot count than I was expecting with, with an offense like Edmonton out there. Yeah, and a lot of that may have to do with, I mean, LA's doing a good, like you, you mentioned it in the first period, they're doing a really good job of uh, keeping things on the edge. Out on the perimeter. You don't see a lot of flashes through the slot from Edmonton so far, at least. Um, and we thought they were going to get that first power play. That didn't happen. So neither team with a power play yet. And uh, kind of grinding into the second period. Can't find the flow just yet. A lot of neutral zone. Uh, Yeah, I'm not These sure guys what's are going having a, a riot in the chat there. All right. <laughs> this is a high shot count. Then the games we see that are like in the 30s and 40s must be something insane. Yeah, I'm not sure. Is that what the announcers were just saying? No, that's what he's saying. It's not a high shot count in the, in the oh, chat I see, here. Yeah. See, that's, I got to go over here for the chat. Let's go over here. Oh, that was almost a really nice setup there. All right, so we're at about 14 minutes left in the second period here. Again, a lot of... Just kind of oh. cycling. Edmonton with a good chance there. McDavid, oh, he just put it past the net. They get another point shot there. LA scrambling a little bit. Feels like something might happen here. We'll have to see. Yeah, they got it clear. So maybe Edmonton starting to kind of press down on the Kings a little bit here, putting their foot on the gas. You can feel the momentum. Starting to shift, crowd kind of getting into it now, getting them riled up. 
<laughs> what inning are we in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we need Mike from uh, Seattle Sports Diaries to come back and give the the Mariners updates for us here. So we're in the we're in the second inning. We're in the second period. That'd probably be like the equivalent of I don't know what the fifth inning in baseball. About halfway through the game. Oh, here. on the break. Pretty close. Seen some good opportunities here. I mean, you had uh, Jonathan Quick just flopping all over the place, six by four, basically wide open net, and Oilers didn't make it happen. And then you have it going the other way. Mike Smith shut him down. Yeah, McDavid just kind of walked that out from behind the net. Got a really great chance there in front. But uh, yeah, Quick closing him out. So we go to a little bit of a break here. Let's look at the stats. We're at 14 shots for Edmonton. Nine for LA, so Edmonton is definitely taking a little bit of an edge here into the second period. It's been pretty good. They're getting that momentum going, like I, I was just mentioning, and uh, going to be interesting. Sometimes when that starts happening, you, you'll see a team scrambling around in their own zone, and that's when penalties happen. Be curious to see if LA keeps it clean or see what's going on here. Yeah, it's going to be a real test of their discipline with Edmonton on the push like this. Yeah. Okay, so earlier today, um, I was mentioning, let's see here. I think I posted this this morning. So we were talking a little bit about uh, the Dorov here, right? And that hit that he had mm -hmm. on uh, uh, Glenn Denning, right? And so I think my beef with this is like, not only did uh, Department of Player Safety, they deemed it not a suspendable offense, but, I mean, he, he clearly goes through the head, so I'm not really sure. I've seen plenty of these hits be called suspensions. There, was no, there wasn't even a, a penalty called on the ice, and I think that's kind of why I was highlighting, like, you know, right here you can see the referee's got the angle on it, and he's right there. He sees the hit through the head and then kind of the aftermath of it here. But yeah, I, he I was what, gone. What was, your, what, did, what was your thinking on that? Did you think it was going to be a suspension or – at least should have been a penalty or something. I, I think when you, you get into playoff hockey, the whistles kind of go in the pocket unless it's something really obvious. Uh, I kind of expected it to go like, like this, honestly. The, the player safety, sometimes they do stuff and you're like, oh, okay, probably should have been more, but they did something when this when they just let it completely go. Whatever they saw, I mean, they saw and the decision they made is the decision they made. Playoff hockey is a different beast. I'm not saying that it's yeah. right. I mean, you can obviously right. see that it's a it's a pretty big trauma to the head. I mean, you have Crosby out of the playoff series right now from a from a hit to the head. Also, it's if you protect yeah. the players and keep your stars in, or, or do you play you know rough and physical hockey? I guess at least with that one, it seemed like more of an innocuous kind of a collision, and then the whiplash a little bit. Yeah, and, you know, then his elbow kind of came up and through afterwards, but. I don't know. It just that is a door off hit last night to me. It just felt like the pedigree of at least a one game suspension, uh, just based on what we've seen throughout the year, uh, mm -hmm. kind of the precedent that's been set. But yeah, I mean you're right. Playoff hockey's a different beast. I, I don't know. It just seems like he can't figure out what a suspension's going to be or not be anymore these days. And uh, I don't. I don't really love seeing the the headshots like that, but. It's going to definitely add to the intrigue tomorrow because Zadorov looked like he was going to come after Jamie Ben. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, you see these guys on the ice every other day. It's a very emotional and physical game. Those emotions obviously build over the series, and it can get very interesting very quick. What's that? I'm good. Thank you. So kind of watching the, the end of the, the Winter Hawks and T-Birds game here. Uh, yeah, what's Portland's the update there? Portland's pulled the goalie. Uh, Seattle's just got two to one lead. Uh, 116, obviously, Portland's on the attack. But so far, doing what they need to do. So you're going to try to catch one of those late series games between Portland and Seattle? Probably, yeah. <laughs> Rumor is you like hockey, Ty. 
Uh, a little bit. Yeah, I've, tra- I've traveled quite a bit this season, <laughs> seeing the Kraken. Uh, it's it's three hours for me just to get up there. And then I get to drive back three hours the next day if I stay or drive back three hours afterwards. Yeah, that's tough, too, when the game gets over, mm-hmm. you know, pretty late in the evening. I've got about an hour, hour and a half drive. It's not too bad, but that's not bad. Yeah, three hours, you know, that can be a little bit of a journey. Are you, um, are you guys planning on staying in that area? Were you ever consider moving, moving a little closer to Seattle or, uh, uh probably stick around here for a while. I, I'm in yeah. semiconductor industry and you have like one of the largest Intel R and D fabs here in Portland or in Hillsborough. So yeah. there's a lot of semiconductor around here. It's a it's a great place for my skill set and my career. So there is a little bit of stuff around Seattle, but I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, I wouldn't mind also, being up there. It's all. I mean, it's good to be closer, but it's also more expensive the closer you get, right? So it's yeah. I don't know if you're happy where you're at. And you don't mind driving a little ways. Yeah, for I'm so used to to driving around. For even just going mountain biking, we used to drive four hours to go hit Moab or something like that. Like it was a normal thing. Yeah. So Ooh, yeah, usually my, my three hour drive is getting caught up on all the the hockey podcasts and getting fired up and getting ready to yeah. go. Yeah. That's a, I, that's usually when I do most of my listening and watching is when I'm driving around in the car. Uh, either that or when I'm like trying to fall asleep at night, I'll put something on, just listen to it. A lot of good shows, you know, even in our uh, new market here for Seattle, there's a lot of good shows mm-hmm. and a few few YouTube channels, you know, myself included there. But uh, it's been cool to see the different the different content creators and all that kind of start to develop uh, from the ground up here in the first year. It's it's really neat. A lot of them putting out like really high quality products also. Now I've been really impressed. So 10.45 left in the second here. Just a quick update stats-wise. Edmonton still with the edge. Uh, 16 to 13. LA's hanging in there, though. I I thought that... Ooh. Edmonton just almost punched it in there right at the goal line. They think it might have might have gone in. Did you see a flash? I'm of, switching uh, over now. Yeah, I, I think Quick covered it. It was very, very, very close. So they'll probably take a look from that overhead angle. I was just about to say I thought the Kings have done a pretty good job of quelling that, uh, that push by Edmonton. Ooh, no, it didn't cross. We're good. Oh, wow. No goal. Saved Out of that, right that upper... on the doorstep. Yeah. I thought it's you. I think he's the one that scooped it. Yeah, he just barely. Wow, what a timely play by him. Pretty good positioning. Good. Oilers doing a good job just grinding down in there and really, really saved the day. So Seattle just you. sunk a empty net goal, 3-1. It's over. So I'm going to focus on the Oilers game now. Nice. So they're going to go to that game uh, six. Yep. Right? And that's going to be in um, Portland, you said? The next one? I think six is in Seattle. In Seattle. Okay. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'd have to look. Yeah, I haven't. I'll be honest. I haven't done a real good job keeping up with the Thunderbirds here the last couple of weeks. I'm usually a little better about it, but pretty busy trying to do stuff for this, you know, newer channel here and mm-hmm. uh, just keeping up with the NHL playoffs. And then of course, real job and real life <laughs> that keeps you busy, but mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it's really hard. I haven't watched a minute of the NBA playoffs. Once hockey playoffs are going, that's, that's my life. Like, let's go. Yeah, Yeah, for sure. Like the chat just kind of cooled down there. I'm not. I was having trouble following what those guys were saying. I was <laughs> not really. Uh, yeah. Is Jonathan quick? <laughs> I don't think they're still in here. That's okay. I mean, I don't want to like boot people. There's no reason to. I just was not really following anything they were saying. I I don't think it was the guys I thought it was, but it could have been. We'll see. I don't mind it. I you said you, you fairly, don't know them. <laughs> well, it means nothing. Channel, I'm, I'm just happy to have uh, any comments, right? So that's that's yeah. cool for me. Man, so far. And uh, if they are still watching and you want to smash that like button, it would be much appreciated. 
Kopitar sitting just... there waiting for the rebound. Didn't happen. Edmonton slowly closing in on 20 shots here. Kind of on pace for that 30-shot mark. Showing the replay of that, the game. that uh, scoop out of the red line there by Quick. Yeah. So I mean, close. Incredible timing uh, and presence right there. That's my favorite name to say, too. Athletisio. I'm not sure if I say it exactly right, but <laughs> Evander Kane jockeying for the call there. And he's like, nope, it didn't go in. He's like, are you sure? Hmm. So, yeah. yeah. All right, so let's let's game reset just a little bit here. We're pretty much halfway through the game. And uh, we've talked about it a couple times now. It feels like a little bit of a chess match, which sounds like you think favors the Kings. Is that... Is that right? I think that's the only way. If they can keep it a chess match like this, it's the only way they're going to get through and win this game. Edmonton is, if they start scoring, that ice is going to tilt super fast. That building is going to explode. And I think you're going to see consecutive goals once that happens. Yeah, I thought that little bit of, uh, well, they, obviously they had that chance there right on the goal line. But the, just before yeah. that, they had that flurry of chances kind of felt like that was going to be the moment for McDavid or Dreisaitl, one of them, to put something in. But they didn't uh, get it, so L.A.'s hanging in there, hanging around. Uh, they got nothing to lose. I mean, the pressure's definitely going to ratchet up more on Edmonton as we go down the stretch, and uh, it starts to creep in. You know, that that pressure and that stress level, and you grip the stick just a little bit tighter as you're coming down on breakaways <laughs> and things like that. Uh, but... I don't know. We'll we'll see what happens here. Coming out of the break, I think, let's see, it's going to be 8.30 left in the game, second period. Showing a bunch of the highlights of the scoring opportunities. Oh, from, from historical. Yeah. That little series that Jonathan Quick was flopping all over like a fish out of water. Do you happen to know offhand which uh, guys coming out of Edmonton are free agents? I summer? don't. I do not. Yeah, you can just pull up cap friendly real quick, and then you'll you'll have a whole giant list of them. Take a quick look here. On my TV now, though. Mm. Woo! Great opportunity there. So LA wins a faceoff, puts a shot on net. It kind of bounces back behind the boards and then right out front, but he kind of fanned on it. And then it goes the other way. So LA trying to bring it back out of the zone now. Keeping it outside. It's clear of the zone. And here comes LA. Mm. So I'm right at about Ooh. eight, uh, eight fifteen right now. Ty, just heads up. Oh, I'm seven fifty six. Oh, big time save by Jonathan Quick. How'd that sneak through? Oh, there we go. Still, just a lot of, a lot of perimeter from both teams. Those yeah. quick chances coming through the middle there, uh, but not a lot of follow on it. Not a lot of uh, crashing the net. <laughs> After that first initial burst, it doesn't seem like for either team. Oilers really buzzing right now on the offensive end. Yeah, the they're they're able to get out. set up and, and start making plays where LA is kind of getting in the zone and they're, you know, dumping to the center, like front of the net when they get a chance and hoping someone's there with the stick on the ice. And so far, hasn't happened. That was one thing that drove me nuts watching the Kraken is how many of them stand out in front of the net with their sticks up in the air. Right. That's like squirt hockey, like week two. Get your stick on the ice. Oh, so Evander Kane's a free agent uh, because yeah. of the whole contract yeah. oh. situation there. And then you've got Derek Broussard, Josh Archibald, um, Chris Russell, and Brett Kulak. And then Koskinen is actually a free agent as well. Couple restricted, 
Restricted guys. Ulja Jarvi. That's a tough one to say. And Kyler Yamamoto. They're, they're both uh, RFAs at the end of the season. And Ryan McLeod. Mc, McLeod. Probably botching a lot of names right now. <laughs> That's what I get for not reading the pronunciation sheets earlier in the day. <laughs> we don't get all that fancy stuff like the pros do, but... Oh, great job keeping it in there. And then getting it over to McDavid. Ooh, what a blast save made by Jonathan Quick. Still behind the net. Out centered. Oh, my gosh. They're getting a little fancy with their pass. And... Well, yeah, Edmonton full-on attack right now. Yep. Oh, there's a goal. LA trying to survive it. It sounds like they don't. So Edmonton Uh-oh. on the board. First goal of the game. Right in front there. It kind of pops back. Uh, to the point, McDavid cycles back behind the net, and puts it over there to the slot or to the to the faceoff circle, and they put it home. So let's uh, let's do the goal horn tie. <laughs> <laughs> so the first of the game there, and the watch party's going crazy outside. Yeah. Nice play by McDavid. He kind of curled back behind the net, kept the play going. They got it back up to the point, kind of reset. Had Jonathan Quick kind of moving back and forth there, and uh, a little too much for L.A. Finally wore him down. It's really fun to watch McDavid just operate behind the net there. And he does a fantastic job of, if he stays back there and making a great pass, or if he brings it out, he does a great job of protecting the puck kind of keeping the defender, you know, at arm's reach. Yeah. And basically doing almost whatever he wants most of the time. Oh, oh they should be expected. The, the crowd is definitely uh, into it at this point. That was Cody CC's <laughs> first of the playoffs assisted. Oh! Connor McDavid there. Got some more action. It looks like. Yeah. You seeing, Ty? <laughs> I mean, wide open nets and, uh, and an Edmonton guy standing there. No, he didn't score, but. Huge kind of opportunities. Like LA needs to get out of this period. Yeah. Like, as soon as possible. Oh! Jonathan Quick wow. just kind of all over in the crease. And the Oilers are really bringing it right now, trying to get that knockout punch. Who just here got in called? Seven. Yeah, so we've had, what, like 13, oh 14 gosh. shots in this period? Yeah. I mean, it's just, they're just firing at will at this point. Keane almost won with one there. And so LA's going to go shorthanded Edmonton pouring it on. This is kind of what you predicted earlier. Once the, the Oilers got that first goal, it could just be a house of cards that collapses on the Kings, but we'll mm-hmm. see what happens here. They've played pretty tough responding throughout the series. They did have those two games that got away from them, but this is going to be a really big power play coming out of the break. So wh- what are your feelings here, Ty? What are you seeing? What do you think is going to happen? I mean, this is a this is a must stop, you know, penalty kill here. If you if you don't stop this, like you might as well let the floodgates open at this point. Jonathan Quick is doing everything he needs to be doing in net. He's all over the place. The defense got to help him out. There was you know a handful of missed clears there. The PK has to get that puck to the other end of the ice and kill this, or this you know very well could easily swing the vast majority uh, of the momentum of this game. Now, on the flip side of that, if you're L.A., if you can get out of this period only down one, reset a little bit, um, you know, maybe this is Edmonton's big push here. Maybe mm-hmm. you can catch them flat foot a little bit in the third period. They've had those moments of, um, you know, inattentiveness and those swings of momentum that bites them sometimes, too. So if you're the Kings, what's your uh, what's your kind of pull some positives here from this period? What What can you do? Try to get out of this just down one. I mean, you come out of this down one, I think that's going to fire the boys a little bit. You're going to see the bench kind of react to that. They know that they are very much still alive. And if you can, you can keep the dry sidle and McDavid and, you know, into the rest of the all-star team into the list there yeah, off the board on a power play. Like that's, that's big time. That's going to, that's going to build momentum for them. So 25 shots now for Edmonton, uh, 540 left mm. in the second. Just a uh, a flurry of chances here. 
So let's see what happens here. Last few minutes of the second period, we'll go into break. We've got a couple things to talk about, some of the games from earlier today. And uh, we're, we already talked about that Boston-Carolina game. Uh, I'm glad we did while Brian was here. It's fun to chat with him. And then uh, we want to talk, obviously, about the Leafs suffering their demise in Game 7. So back to action here. 540 to go for me. Ties just a little bit ahead in the feed. Uh, so just a heads yeah. up if you're if you're viewing at home. Uh, we'll probably we'll get the reaction from Ty and then I'll kind of give an in uh, in real time uh, recap of what just happened here. Edmonton on that power play now, about a minute thirty left on that, and this could be a really really big moment. La trying to kill it off towards the end of the so second LA's, period. La is kind of set up in their their triangle plus one kind of scheme here. They got mm-hmm. one guy uh, out, three guys on the blue line trying to stop. You know. Edmonton coming in the zone. Once Edmonton's in the zone, they go to that triangle plus one. And so far it's been effective. Uh, they've got multiple clears, but I, I really like the, the triangle plus one. You kind of have, you know, your, your two defenders back by the goalie, your forwards up front, kind of one of them splitting off, depending on what side of the ice the puck is on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, I mean, you see this, the, the Kraken are very effective at generating offense off of this. So I'm not saying that's what LA is going to do, but they have an opportunity if they get the right guy out there, they could take off. Yeah. I've always been, um, I know a lot of people like to see a super aggressive penalty kill, uh, but mm-hmm. I kind of prefer those more passive setups like you're talking about and then be opportunistic with it. Right. So uh, I, I thought the Kraken as far as penalty kill this year, they did. I don't, I don't know numbers wise off the top of my head, but I thought they did. Okay. They did have some shorthanded chances that they pounced on. And so you kind of, as you watch the different teams, uh, you know, for newer viewers or newer hockey fans in this market, especially, uh, you see the different sets on penalty kill and on power play and the different, um, special teams situations. And, you know, it's a learning experience for a lot of people, but, uh, missed basically an open net there. So waited a little long on the shot. A few seconds left on their power play. So it looks like they get a... They rotate it down from the point, back up, big shot, rebound, wide open net, and he he just couldn't get that puck shot quick enough. He held on to it a little nope. too long. He should have just fired it immediately. Was that um, trying to see who that was? It's hard to read the names on uh, Edmonton's jerseys. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, it's Nugent Hopkins, ninety three. I should know that one. <laughs> It's just, I mean, you know, he, he, <laughs> he could have taken the time and let, you know, quick kind of scoot out of the way because he was kind of carrying that momentum across the crease and then just put it, you know, glove side, but he stuck it wide stick side. Kind probably of fortunate about, one for LA. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Probably about the, the as fortunate as you could get uh, there for LA. Yeah, there was in a, a lot that, of empty net. Yeah, I mean, they've, they've definitely been pushed uh, – I don't want to say to the brink here, but I'm not sure how much more pressure Edmonton could have brought this period, to be honest. They're at 27 shots now, so far, far outpacing their shot count from the first period and definitely taking the game over a little bit here. But like we've seen, you can see the look on some of the the faces of the Oilers that they're just like, how is Mm -hmm. this not going in? Uh, They're kind of in shock here. LA's got to capitalize, even strength. It's time to go. Well, and then that, you know, the fatigue is going to set in a little bit too, right? Where game seven, yeah, uh, you know, it's, there's only so many days in the first round. So those games start piling mm-hmm. up and guys getting gassed. And, uh, you know, so maybe that's starting to affect the Kings a little bit here. But who knows? Maybe it's going to affect the Oilers as well. They've had this big surge of adrenaline and momentum here in the second period. So maybe, you know, we've talked about that a little bit too. Maybe you go to the third, the Kings can hang on here and keep it at a one goal deficit. Uh, that would give them a good chance, but let's see how this period finishes. we got three minutes and 15 seconds left right out of that face off in LA zone. Edmonton still churning around with the puck. Another big chance there from behind the net. Jonathan quick had to slide over to close the door there. That was a pretty close one too. Yeah. Almost tucked it right we- in there. It was very similar to the the Canes game today when Stahl almost did the same kind of tuck in there. Yeah. Oh, he just they just went and reviewed got his it. Foot over. Yeah. 
just started to float off the post and then he immediately dug that foot back in. Great play by that's like vintage Jonathan Jonathan Quick. He's been you know, for where he's at stage wise in his career, he's been really incredible down the stretch here for the Kings. Mm-hmm. Uh pretty impressive. Especially when I mean there's been oh there's been times when um you know Jonathan Quick he'll get a little bit out of control in his crease sliding around and I thought he's done mm-hmm. he's done seems like a little bit better job of that especially against a team like Edmonton that it's just constant pace and speed it can really get you off balance in your crease when you're trying to adjust and move laterally and uh you know dealing with all sorts of traffic and things like that but he's done a you know other like I said other than those uh two games where it just got completely out of control thought he's done a pretty good job for the Kings so far Obviously, right there watch in Game it. Seven. Watch this play coming up. Takes a little poke at uh, Jonathan Quick as he skates by. So Cassian coming in gets that backhander. Wow! Little tappy tap. Jonathan <laughs> not too happy about it. And that is one thing you see from him. He doesn't put up with any BS. He will. Uh, he'll mm-hmm. let you know about it. Kind of that old school uh, Ron Hextall type of attitude at times. So I may as well, you know, mention tomorrow's games. You know, we've got more Game 7s coming. Uh, I think yesterday I I tweeted out that Oprah meme. Everybody gets a Game 7 this year in every market except for <laughs> except for the Minnesota Wild. Sorry, Minnesota. Yeah. The state of hockey and- is now the state of golfing. Ooh. Ooh, Jonathan Quick getting a little shot in on that save there, too. You'll see. Like, oh, you want to be in my crease? I'm going to say hi to your face, Mr. Yamamoto. Oh, man. And McDavid, before that pass in there, just, you know, the puck Look on the that. string. Just amazing mm-hmm. puck handling skills. And he just he just waits, 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 and he finds that opening and puts it right in there. Really, really high-quality chance there uh, for Yamamoto, and then he gets beat up a little bit in the crease. But that's part of the deal. You're going to go in there. You're going to get knocked around. You want to mm-hmm. score those uh, grinding down low goals. Where, where is the defenders though? Like the defense should be not, they should yeah, be he, between him and quick. Like yeah, he, he just kind of floated right in between him. That overhead actually gives you a good idea of the spacing. Yep. But yeah, Edlers need, he needs to pinch down just a little bit further. Uh, Stetcher, you know, he was right in there, but this is what I'm talking about. If Ellie can get out of the here, just down one, I mean, Edmonton's going to look back and regret not burying some of these chances. That's probably three or four now, grade A, right? Like You can see it on their faces as they're skating away from a lot of these plays, just like how has it not gone in? So minute 27 here left, uh, second period as we go down into intermission. Stick around. Uh, chat, not very busy right now. That's okay. We're having fun. Uh, you know, if this is the first time dropping by, hit that subscribe button for me. I appreciate all the support. Uh, thanks again, Ty, for dropping by tonight. It's been absolute pleasure. Always love hanging out with you and talking hockey. Uh, lucky to have you on the show tonight. So we we are going to go into intermission here in just a minute, and uh, we will take a quick couple-minute break, but we're going to break down some of the action from earlier today. Got a couple other talk, topics we want to talk about and then go into that final third period as, uh, I don't know, it, this could have potential to turn into that overtime game. I was uh, teasing with Dylan a little bit. Maybe he'll get that triple overtime. Um, I don't know. If, so, if we, are so we going to go all the, the way end? through? Yeah. Are we going to stream yeah. if they go to overtime? What's your, uh, <laughs> what's your schedule tonight? I'm not scared. I, th- I think we still have a, like a handful of things we could talk about cracking wise. We got, you know, all right. the prospects coming up and I, I got tons of stuff we could talk about. I was kind of hoping we'd get some more questions from Hugh, Jazz, and Bubby Watts, but I think I think they're gone for good. Yeah. I don't want to encourage the trolls either, but... Yeah, I was going to say, like, some constructive <laughs> comments are, are usually a little bit more fun. Yeah. It just kind of felt like uh, they were spamming a little bit. But I didn't... We don't them. have the, the cool bots. Like, uh, when we do ECH stuff, we always get bots. Oh, you do? Yeah, they, there'll be all kinds of like naked girl, click this link, and <laughs> <laughs> it's really, it's quite funny. 
Yeah, I mean, when you get to that point, you've got to have some moderators helping out too, right? Like, I, I, I think they do have moderators for their stream, don't they? Oh, uh, they both are all over it, so they're they're yeah. pretty good about taking yeah. care of it. Yamamoto's hurting a little bit. I don't know. Yeah, if that's... he's getting knocked around here. Uh, I mean, he's not a very big guy. So no. you go down into that crease. Jonathan Quick's gonna give you a few wax with the lumber, and those defensemen aren't gonna mess around with it. But yeah, he's. Cr- stumbling into the bench there on the Edmonton side, looking a little bit banged up. We'll have to see if he comes back for the third, but I, I'm i fairly confident. I've seen that kid play quite a bit. He will be back. Mm-hmm. Yep. And then a nice block there. Uh, I didn't catch who that was, but it went off his arm. So Edmonton putting the body down too. You know, they're, they're they're willing to sacrifice, and maybe that's something you didn't see in years prior with them. Uh, they've had their struggles in the playoffs too, so you love to see the battle. You can't just let McDavid and Drysaddle do it all, even though it, like, they end up they end up doing that anyways. It seems like twenty five seconds left in the second period, one nothing Edmonton. I'm really surprised LA is going to get out of this. Uh, I might be jinxing them a little bit here. We're right at the last few no, seconds. No, you're good. But... <laughs> they got away with it. Oh, they actually had a, a pretty good opportunity right at the kind of the close of the period here. Oh, Sitting yep, there yep. on the doorstep, just banging away. Yeah, wouldn't that have been something? Tie it up with just a few seconds left in the third. But that's not what happened. So we're 25 shots in the period there for Edmonton. Just dominant, but only one goal on the scoreboard. Ah. Uh, Wow. So like we were saying, LA going to go regather themselves, take a little bit of a reset. And you wonder maybe fatigue factor setting in if Edmonton went too big there and didn't get much to, uh, to say for it on the scoreboard, going to have to see how that third period starts, but I would expect a surge from LA. What do you think in time? I mean, hopefully they go in and they make a little bit of adjustments to the game and come out with something to show for it. If not, this is going to be, Kind of a nail biter going through. Yeah. So let's take a little bit of a look at uh, that second game today. Uh, The Toronto Maple Leafs met their demise again, yet again in the playoffs. They, you know, no shame in losing to the Stanley (laughs) Stanley Cup champs, back to back champs. Uh, But. You know, just going through the the notes there uh, real quick. Uh, came in first period. Nick Paul, uh, he gets the bolts on the board first. He kind of had that one-handed uh, shovel shot there late in period one. And you heard the announcer say it over and over today. We mentioned it on this broadcast. That first goal in a game seven gives you a win 75% of the time. And that's holding true so far today. And uh, yeah, so Nick Paul, not the name you would expect to hear, but he's got that big reach, uh, good start for Tampa. Uh, We go into the second period there, 11.28 left in the second. Everyone thought that John Tavares got that goal there for the Leafs, but they had blown it dead for an interference call. So instead of getting a goal and tying the game, the Leafs go on the penalty kill. And at that point, I thought that was going to be a little bit of a turning point. And they did get that penalty kill. And Ty, you kind of saw the the same thing that happened with Edmonton tonight. They kind of got that re-energized crowd going. And you thought maybe they were going to gather themselves. And they do. They tie the game, right? Mm Mm-hmm. It was Morgan Riley's uh, second. He he broke through there about six and a half minutes left in the second period. Um, So they tie it up. And then you go 16-32 uh, into the second, and the Leafs, they have that failure to clear the zone out. Uh, Alex Kalorn kind of scooped the puck in, kept it in. He kind of passed off again to Nick Paul. He kind of just, I don't know if you saw that one, but he, he just really carved his way down through the zone. Uh, a couple nice little moves, and he scored his second of the game, put the bolts up 2-1. to one. It, That one really felt like, to me, a backbreaker to a guy that's not supposed to be scoring a lot of goals and you're at home and he just broke, you know, he just uh, killed off that penalty, got some momentum going, and then they go back up two to one. I don't know. What were your thoughts at that point in the game for the Leafs? I mean, 
that crowd can get you back into the game very quick. And mm-hmm. I think they were they were definitely loud and they were they were hoping also, but uh not much of a Maple Leafs fan. So I was kind of just <laughs> sitting back enjoying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's okay to to see them uh struggle a little bit because it, there's some good entertainment that comes out of it. we've talked about it throughout the, the show tonight we're gonna get that steve dangle reaction video god bless him mm-hmm. uh poor guy but geez so anyhow so they go into the third you could really feel uh the pressure on the leafs just mounting and um the bolts they just basically sal- salted it away they they grinded it through the third period uh, Leafs couldn't break through. They had a couple of chances here and there. They just, they just couldn't mm-hmm. get on the board. And that was really the whole story. Uh, just a lack of ability to score down the stretch. Yeah. Big time kind of chess match there. I think Toronto had a lot of great opportunities. Just none of them sunk. It was kind of like the third period in Boston. You just watch like all of these open net looks and then you, you fan on a shot or yeah. something like that happens. There was a ton of those in that game also. So the Leafs come up empty handed in the playoffs again, round one and done. Uh, I mean, this time they lose to the lightning, the defending the back-to-back defending Stanley cup champs. So a little bit of a bummer out there for Toronto. Like you said, I, I mean, I don't know. I'm not a huge Leafs fan either. I thought, Really thought this year was going to be the year they broke through. Austin Matthews looked really focused, and Mitch Marner's been amazing. But again, uh, another failure. So a lot of soul searching and back to the drawing board in Toronto. So, all right. So we're going to do a quick little uh, two minute break here as we go back into intermission, and we're going to work our way toward the third period. So if you're still on the stream, stick around. I appreciate it. Uh, Ty and I are going to take a quick little break, and we'll be back in just a couple minutes. All right.
All right, so we're back live here. About to hit the third period, and um, it's been a great stream. Had some good engagement. Really glad to have you guys along tonight. If you're still hanging in there on the stream, I appreciate it. We've got Ty Jacobs here. Uh, I'm going to bring him back in just a second. Flip over there. What's up, Ty? Back from break. Hey. Got some refreshments. Did you get your popcorn? No. <laughs> I'm actually not a big popcorn fan. <laughs> no, I'm, just, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So shots 34-17. Uh, I mean, Edmonton with that huge push there in the second period. And we're going to come out of there, see what the Kings have left in the tank, see what Edmonton has left in the tank. The series has really taken some dramatic turns, and I wouldn't I wouldn't uh, uh, be too certain which way it's going to go in the third. I put a poll up in the chat here. A few votes, it looks like. So somebody's, somebody's watching out there. Uh, I haven't but it voted like yet because I... I have not decided yet. <laughs> Looks like it's about 50-50. Only a few votes. So, I did a poll earlier with the Leafs. That Leafs game. I think I posted it right as we went into the third. And, mm -hmm. like, instantly had, like, 20 votes. That was a little surprising. But it was kind of a 50-50 split. I should go check. See what it ended up at. I'm sure people are still voting now. Because I didn't set it to expire for, until, like, tomorrow. But... Uh, but yeah, it was like a 50-50 split coming in to the third period for the Leafs. But uh, yeah, it ended up 52... 52%... 53% of people said they were going to go golfing. 47% said they were going to win. But yeah, <laughs> I mean... <laughs> yikes. Poor Leafs. Okay, so a little bit of a game reset here again. We're coming in. This is going to be the last period potentially for the Kings. Impressive season and a rebuilding year. And uh, Edmonton really looking to, to move forward uh, potentially into the second round. They've got some work to do here uh, down the stretch. I feel like LA has been a little bit more physical, but they've had to be, right? Because they're chasing a little bit in their own end, a little bit. They're definitely getting behind on defense and I think that was the the key contributor to, the, to that goal otherwise like Jonathan Quick's back there doing everything he needs to be doing it's like I have yeah. nothing nothing bad to say about his efforts back there uh, kind of looking down your stats here it's really interesting also I mean obviously and dominating shots but you go down to face-offs and LA is winning a lot of face-offs I think a lot of those face-offs are, are in the defensive zone unfortunately yeah. but yeah, uh, I that think could that could be key though. You know, maybe a face off in Edmonton's yeah. end. And anyway, so I, I interrupted you there. If 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 LA can get in the zone and get set up and actually get to where they're either cycling the puck or you know trying to set up plays, that could be huge. I haven't really seen that yet. Uh, the opportunities they do get, they come in quick. They you know try to center something in front of the net nobody home and then you have that transition game from Edmonton that is crazy fast and all of a sudden you know Jonathan Quick is making a save or something like that so yeah. th this transition you you can't I mean it's easy to say you can't you know feed the transition game of Edmonton right but it's a lot more difficult not to do because these guys are so good and so proficient they know where each other are on the ice and a lot of them are you know very quick Especially yeah. Jonathan. Mm -hmm. Jonathan is very quick. The quickest of them all. I'm going to say that was right the here. insight of the night in the chat. Just throwing that out. <laughs> yeah. I have a... Oh, they almost dropped the puck. I was just trying to get like time synced up. Puck drop. Yeah. So. Yeah, so let's... LA uh, wins and away it goes. Yep, just dropped right here. Oh, false drop. <laughs> Yeah, I'll that's what I did. Uh, okay, so I'm probably like 15 seconds ahead of you in the stream. Yeah. But like I said, I LA actually is kind of set up in the zone here. Okay, now they're set up. Got it behind the net. Going to cycle over to the corner, kind of back behind the net again. Edmonton's actually giving them the back of the net. A little center look there that was blocked. Like, this is what, this is what needs to happen. Ooh, good pass there. And here comes Edmonton in transition. Oh, they got shut down, though. So. Yeah, exactly what you want to see the Kings do. And even even though you mentioned that Edmonton's kind of giving them 
the room behind the net there to operate, but uh, I wouldn't want to give them too much room because all it takes is one little pass out mm. front and pop it into the net and you've got a tie game. And then all of a sudden that pressure really heaps onto uh, Edmonton. Jonathan Quick coming up massive save. That could have been game right there. And Jonathan Quick just shut him down. You're probably getting it right about now. So it looks like a turnover kind of at their blue line. Edmonton comes all the way down and a backhanded breakaway chance there. Jonathan Quick, like Ty just mentioned, cleans it up. And man, the Kings just hanging by a thread here, it feels like. Uh, I don't know. This is a risk of, you know, getting set up in the zone. Is like That transition is so fast by Edmonton that... I mean, we, we watched this with the Kraken quite a bit early in the season. We would get set up and doing mm-hmm. good stuff, and then all of a sudden, pew, there goes the other team yep, down the down ice. The other way. Odd man rush, and oh, man, here we go. So similar feel here. Yeah, you got three players kind of up against the boards for L.A., and then off to the race as they go. I'm getting 18, replays 17. here. Ooh. Seems like they're sticking with that um, dry side old McDavid. Uh you know, the, the all-star pairing. Yeah, it's been very it's, consistent through the game. I was surprised. I thought they were just going to go to it in flashes, but they, like you, you mm-hmm. just said, it's been pretty consistent. There's Archibald. That was one of the guys we talked about. It's going to be a free agent for Edmonton coming out of this season. Uh, you know, not, not a real big name player, but a <gasps> decent guy. Should check LA's free agents coming out too. I know that Dustin Brown is going to retire. He's had a long career mm-hmm. there. Uh, yep. Typical, you know, hockey smile type of guy. Missing teeth, really hard worker. Pretty prolific during those Stanley Cup years. And, uh, you know, this could potentially be his last few minutes in the league. So something to think about for Kings fans and just hockey fans in general. When you see a guy play that long uh, and it ends like this in a game seven, it can be pretty devastating. But we'll see what happens. There may be some I tricks mean- left. You could easily segue into Patrice Bergeron here. Uh, you saw him at the end of the Boston game. Yeah. Went around, you know, did the handshake line, which is probably the, the coolest thing in, in hockey. You know, you're in an absolute war with these guys for seven games, and then the game is over. The sportsmanship kicks in. They set the mm-hmm. example for the younger generations. They shake hands. You know, good series, good luck on the next one type stuff. And he shook hands with all the refs and then the whole coaching staffs. And then he stood at the, at the exit of the ice and, you know, did something individually with every single one of his teammates as well. So there's yeah, some that, grumblings about that was his last moments on the ice. I still think he has some hockey. In. Yeah. It, it definitely had the contrast of feeling almost just like you're describing, like maybe his last moments, but he's, <laughs> He's a really good player still, so mm-hmm. I, I mean, he can he could p- probably play a few more years at least. But yeah. uh, you know, maybe it's just a ten year thing in Boston. You know, maybe he's going to be going somewhere else, or he, who knows? Uh, I'm not really sure. But yeah, it looked yeah. it looked to me like you were saying the writing kind of seemed like it was on the wall for uh, potentially that being his last few moments with Boston. Just under 17 minutes here left in the third. And um, things have settled Mc- down just a little bit. McDavid with the fan shot there. Yeah. That's a gift. Oilers closing in on 40 shots, 36 mm-hmm. right now, but they're they're definitely going to eclipse that 40-shot total. Uh, so, you know, credit to Jonathan Quick, really playing a great game tonight, giving the Kings every opportunity to try to get on the board here and make it interesting. As we go down to the last part of this game, it's going to be really interesting to see if we get a push from the Kings here. Uh, but man, it's just looking like everybody's tired right now. <laughs> Not a skate out of Edmonton, but I mean, they're, I would hope that they wouldn't fall back into prevent hockey. It's only one goal. Like this could change in an instant. Mm-hmm. But yeah, definitely looking a little slow. Some of the the forwards are obviously taking off, like you would expect them to. Sean High, LA is doing a good job of keeping what Edmonton's creating to the outside, except for that one opportunity that McDavid kind of fanned on there. Yeah, it just feels like a lot more neutral zone play right now. Mm-hmm. 
kind of settling back into that chess match we've seen throughout the night. You get these quick surges from Edmonton, and then things kind of settle. And at some point, it feels like when they settle, that's when the Kings need to try to make a push. Uh, you know, Ansi Kopitar, Dustin Brown, some of those guys are going to have to step up here, lead the way for the younger Kings. Uh, Brendan Lemieux, one of those guys. And he's been in the mix throughout the series. Be curious to see if he uh, gets in there and does something for the Kings. But I don't know. We're at 15 minutes left. And, um, oh. Yeah, Jonathan Quick giving a little love to his post there. Oh, man. Thank he you. was a little <laughs> bit far out of the net. And yeah. the Oilers rang one off it to, again, leave oh. that window open. Oilers kind of bust in. Darnell Nurse, he missed that last game uh, due to suspension, and he's back tonight. Was it the last game he missed? I might be messing that up. I believe so. I think but, that's uh, correct. He's back tonight. He's played pretty good. I mean, he's he's a good player. I got to watch him in the WHL, too, against the mm-hmm. Thunderbirds for uh, a few years there. It's been fun to watch him develop as a player, and he's really come into his own in Edmonton. Playing pretty good tonight. Seems like he's... All around the puck, you know, he's a physical player, uh, really great asset. You could tell the difference a little bit with him out of the lineup. Even though Edmonton did win that game, uh, you can see the difference uh, on their blue line when he's not in there. Oh. So, again, wow. guys, thanks for, for joining the stream here. We're about 14 minutes left in the third period. Game 7, Edmonton, L.A., uh, last nightcap of the game, got Ty Jacobs, at Sea Kraken Dude, Intel with me here for a special playoff edition of, uh, you know, a watch along here, as we call them. A lot of fun to do these. Going to try to do a couple of them, a few of them here through the playoffs. Uh, so I appreciate you stopping by in the comments and all the support. Um, so I'm going to keep this going. And got a couple updates coming here in the next couple weeks. And I've, I've been trying to record more videos here and there instead of just live streaming. Uh, cause it's, you know, it's a good thing to, to keep balance on your channel and things like that. But yeah, so there's that replay tie. McDavid just gave it right over there to, um, not Cassian. Cassian passed it. That's the other one there that bounced off a of quick and he looked behind him. A couple of quick peeks there mm-hmm. from Jonathan mm-hmm. quick, mm-hmm. uh, keeping a little it bit of scrambling. Like you said, yeah, look a at love to look at post. how fast Edmonton comes to the neutral zone. It, you just mm-hmm. you have to be physical with them, or they're just going to skate right past you. Right. So LA had oh. a little bit of a good possession there, and like Ty said, Edmonton just busts right back out. And then they I thought we were going to have a Mike Smith low. moment there. LA kind of countering the transition. They get a good dump in here. Mike Smith chasing it behind his net, and he falls down in the face. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was talking about. <laughs> I should freeze. I'm going to freeze frame that. and uh, we'll make If you're an Oilers Smith fan, game. you want to see Mike Smith in the blue paint, and that is all. <laughs> all right, we're getting down to, like, just over – what, 12 minutes to go? I kind of expect this crowd, this, this crowd needs just a little something to get excited about, and they'll be on their feet the rest of the game. Uh, so far, it looks like everybody's time. sitting down. Yep. Some big moments coming here. We've only had one, uh, one power play tonight. It didn't really materialize into anything for Edmonton. Uh, just, just a two-minute penalty. Um, we've we've pointed it out a couple times now, LA with that edge in the face-off circle. So keep an eye on that going down the stretch. Uh, if they do yield any face-offs, if Edmonton yields any face-offs in their own end, keep an eye on that because if I'm LA, I haven't been able to get a lot of sustained pressure. Uh, so maybe that's a good opportunity to get a good setup, win the face-off, and get a quick shot from there. Maybe that's your chance to get back in this thing. Edmonton just... Going to keep churning away. About 12 minutes left. McDavid now kind of going down low to dry sidle, and they've got that low to high cycle going. McDavid cuts to the middle, and pretty good wow. opportunity there, but he didn't get the shot off. Sounds like another opportunity coming here. 
Uh, Dry sidle down yeah. low in the corner. They spin it around behind the net. And McDavid doing his thing in his office. He just curls right past the guy, hits Darnell Nurse coming weak side. And if he had gotten his stick on that, that would have been two to nothing. So here's the here's the crowd I was talking about. Right around like 11 minutes, 10 minutes. They got to stand up and they got to get going. They yeah. got to get their, their boys fired. Yep, they got the, the sparkly orange pom-poms are in full effect now for Edmonton. The crowd senses it. It's just kind of grinding LA, away yeah. here. Yeah. Oh. Right as LA gets set up, they get kind of a, a good look, and then out the zone it goes. Yeah, At least just, Edmonton's not skating it down the ice this time. Mike Smith out of his crease again. It does feel like a lot of LA's chances tonight have fizzled, and it's not because they aren't in good position, but it's just you know maybe – kind of fumbling the puck at the wrong moment or missing the shot on net or, you know, maybe a big block time by Edmonton. hit Edmonton coming well, the, out of the zone here. They uh, fizzle and then it's like screaming the other way. You can, yeah. Instantly by Edmonton. Oof. Yeah. That was a big crunch down there on the boards. Edmonton making LA work for it coming out of their end. And then another, there's a crowd, another little, Little hit there in Edmonton zone. 38 shots now for the Oilers. They have been pretty dominant possession wise and offensively tonight, but still only that one goal, and anything can happen. The crowd trying to will them through this. Uh, and it just, Ty, I just kind of get a feeling like something's going to happen here in the next couple minutes. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Wow, oh, good block shot there. Yeah, I'm just waiting to see, you know, LA create an opportunity and actually make it stick for a little bit. Kind of been the story the whole night. They just haven't been able to sustain any pressure in the offensive end. Yeah. It's worth repeating. I mean, I, I'm definitely saying it over and over, but that has been the theme the whole night. Kings just cannot get anything sustained down low. Um uh, Decent possession here, it looks like. They did get that cross-ice pass, and Mike Smith with a nice save. Could have been a little tricky moment there. Mm -hmm. And that just gets the crowd going even more, because they're like, all right, Mike Smith, let's go, buddy. Like, David looks gassed. I mean, that guy looks tired. 24 minutes the uh, game prior. You look at his uh, time on ice so far tonight. Yeah, I haven't been updating my stuff. I should know that. Take a quick look here. Flip over. So I'm showing 20 minutes and six seconds. Well, I guess I yeah. should do all 22 minutes. Right. So, you know, you get to that 24, 25 minute mark. It's a lot of ice time. Mm -hmm. That adds up. And, uh, you know, going into round two that could be interesting let's take a quick look at the um oh do i have that graph? i mean they're they're pretty heavy on their their kind of star lineup here with nurse have 16 minutes you got dry saddle with basically 18 minutes yeah nugent hopkins 16 minutes like the guys that you know are on the ice and well, Makes you figured sense. they would lean heavily on him, right? I mean, why not? Yeah. For Jay Woodcroft, this is do or die. Yeah. You can't you can't rest your guys tonight in game seven and a, a series you were supposed to win in the first place, right? You pay these guys the big bucks to do this. Exactly yeah. this. I could throw the heat map up here real quick. So what'll be fun is to see uh, kind of that game tomorrow between the stars and the flames. That'll that'll determine the matchup for the winner of this game. And that could be yeah. that could be really fun. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to just kind of chilling tomorrow, watching the games. Uh, I was glad we were able to do this one tonight. It's been a lot of fun, Ty. Again, I appreciate you stopping by, and always always love listening to you talk hockey and your knowledge of the game. It's been great. So just again, thanks for being here. Um, thanks for everybody that's hit us up in the chat. Uh, I know we had some great engagement earlier in the night. And if you are jumping in here late in this late in this uh, game, 
uh, you know, leave us a comment or hit that like button or something like that. Uh, always appreciate it. A lot of fun. Keep doing this stuff. I was going to try to get that heat map up here. I Broke the zone maps. again. I like the heat maps for the Kraken because you can kind of get a sense for what they're doing and what they're trying to create with it. Mm-hmm. And you can, you can kind of watch over the course of, you know, 82 games of watching this team. You can, you can see them evolve. And then all of a sudden, like one game, they're like, Hey, I'm going to be in front of the net and it works. Yeah. And sometimes very Imagine seldomly that. they, they do it the next game. But most of the time they go with some other and you just get shots from the outside and it's like, what are you guys doing? Like, come on. <laughs> All right, there we go. So this is um this is from natural <laughs> stat trick, right? Look at that shot chart. I mean, this is all situations. Uh gee, which team is dominating the offensive zone tonight? This made me think of uh that picture you sent me at the Kraken game. Where it says, where's the shot chart? And it's just a red, I think it was around, was it Grubauer or somebody? Yeah. I just it's a bright a red, red circle. circle. <laughs> yeah. That was just 100%. me being a smart ass. I can tie, here's tonight's It was accurate map. though. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They ended up winning that game, so I kind of felt bad. Mm-hmm. But uh, up nah. until that point, I think they were playing the Devils that night. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was a little bit of a, a train wreck in their own end at times, but they cleaned it up and won that game. So full marks to the Kraken in that one. And they made me eat crow. So, yeah. <laughs> One <laughs> of the rare pretty, times. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm generally a pretty positive guy, but I think in that game, I was just like, oh my God, again, right here in the middle of the ice, right two feet away from uh, Rubauer again. Yeah. All right. So, we're, we're under eight minutes to go. Uh, it's been a great game, a bit of a chess match. I was kind of hoping for a little bit more of um you know a little higher scoring but i do like these chess matches and they get really intriguing down the stretch because you know la is going to pull the goalie probably at some point if they get to that point and it's going to be just chaos with the last couple minutes left here yeah i was pin that comment that just popped up because 1000 percent agree this game would be nine to nothing if it wasn't for jonathan quick that guy has been everywhere He's got yeah. great angles. He's got great shot lines. Like he's doing his job back there and probably then some. Definitely. But yeah. That's and, the only reason why this game is here. So they're right there at that 39 shot threshold. Um, we were both pretty much thinking they were on pace for 30 and then they had that explosion in a second. So that, that cranked them up there to the 40. They're going to hit 40 here in a minute. And, uh, mm-hmm. But yeah, no, thanks Mike for the for the comment. Good timing on that too because Jonathan Quick has just been like Ty said, just out of this world tonight. He's gotten a couple of fortunate bounces, uh, you know, a post here and there. Uh he got out of position just a little bit there, maybe once or twice, but he's he's played pretty steady. Uh I don't know what else you can ask for if you're the Kings in the hostile environment game 7. You're down by one. This is time like you got to load up. Put your big guns on the ice, and let's see what Todd McClellan has drawn up. These are these in-game in adjustments we've talked about, right? So, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if you're McClellan. What's what's your kind of game plan here? Last few minutes as we as we go towards the finish. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to go on the attack, but you also have to respect that neutral zone that Edmonton has. Like they can take that neutral zone and just transition play you to death. So. You want to attack, but you also need to have one of your defenders paying attention very closely to that. Because if this if this goes to nothing, I think we're done. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, there's only 654 left. Yeah. I don't see the Kings. It's hard to imp- <laughs> it's hard to picture them scoring one tonight so far, just the way it's gone. But two in less than seven minutes. I mean it it happens. But mm-hmm. yeah. Oh, it definitely happens. It just takes me back to that San Jose game when they stuck it to Vegas. Yeah. Timo Meyer. <laughs> Love it. It was like, I think it was like 1.8 seconds or something like that left. It was crazy. So the, the poll voting did answer no. Uh, seven votes. Will the Oilers close out the Kings in the third period? And majority of the votes saying no. So I don't know. We'll see. Might have a little bit of... Uh, little magic here. 
we start getting into overtime, we can start talking about some of the cracking stuff in the breaks. <laughs> yeah, I know. We, we just haven't got to it tonight. That, so when I did this first uh, watch along, I did it with um, Alex from Cracking Canada. I did it. I think it was mm -hmm. Ottawa Senate. Yeah, watch that one. Great guy. And yeah, that's right. You were commenting along the way. Uh, yeah, he's a great, great dude and really, you know, good sports mind, good hockey mind. A lot of fun to talk with him. We talked about doing some maple syrup shops, shots. We never actually got to it, but I had, I had like a set of <laughs> questions for him and, you know, we just kind of got into the game and, and chit chatting and taking comments and things like that. And before you know it, like the game's kind of like tonight feels like it flies by, uh, you know, it's probably mm -hmm. about a two hour stream. So obviously it's tough for people to hang in there for the whole time, but uh, I don't know. For me, these seem like they go pretty quick. I have a lot of fun, you know, having guests on and, and just, you know, being able to connect like that a little bit and chit chat. I would be watching the game anyways, right? So, you know, why not do it with a buddy here and, and uh, chit chat with people on the internet? And it's a lot of fun. Quick look there. Jay, Jay I got to figure out how to do the, the group. Six thirty left. What were you saying, Ty? They got to figure out the the group. Uh, what was that? Oh, so Seattle Sports already say that they could do a, a group of people. We should figure out how to do that for one of these series. That'd be fun. Oh, right. So have like four or five people in here, just like ah, yeah. See who's so who's ahead on the stream and all that. Yeah, and I've been throwing around, um, you know, kind of behind the scenes, a couple of. Uh, ideas for draft this year doing like a you know a, a, an all-star type cast of cracking community and you know some of the podcasters and and people have them jump in jump out for a stream that'd be kind of fun talk to a few people about that seems like you know they're favorable to it and logistically i would just need to set it up i i may not actually be home uh for that uh draft day so that might be a little bit of a complication, but my schedule should firm up here in the next mm, probably month or so. So I'll know, but maybe keep that in the back of your mind. You too, uh, Mike Seattle sports diaries, uh, definitely be fun to have you pop by and, uh, cover like the first couple of rounds over those first couple of days. And that first, you know, pick for the Kraken and well, they have like 12 picks in this draft, right? They're or pretty the stacked. Round. That's a lot. I like to, be I like this. People ask you like, who do you pick for? And I'm like, you trade for Fiala. And they're like, what? <laughs> uh, Mike saying Kings are going to sneak in that game tying goal. And this one getting one and double OT Jonathan quick going to have 70 shots, save 70 shots. Okay. I like I'll the take prediction. It. I like the prediction. I will take it. I'm always okay with overtime. I love it. Mm -hmm. It's the best. Free hockey, but high stress hockey. Yeah. <laughs> and then nice. it's a, a game seven overtime would be. Those are the best too. All right. So we're, we're under five minutes to go here. Uh, mm -hmm. I'll be honest. This didn't really play out the way I thought it would tonight. I've, I've said it, I think a couple times throughout the show here, I thought we'd see a little bit more scoring. I thought Edmonton, you know, could potentially pile on. You mentioned that earlier. You know, you score that one and then the floodgates open. And that's not what happened. Uh, I didn't expect to see L.A. doing as well as they're doing in the face-off circle. That could still be a factor here down the stretch, especially if they pull the goalie. And Edmonton starts icing the puck. Something to keep an eye on. Uh, mm -hmm. Edmonton, with that 39 shots on goal, and really the story. For me so far, first star has been Jonathan Quick, hands down. Oh, Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, looking down this, I mean, we've had one penalty the whole game, which I yeah, actually kind of like. Uh, I hate to see the whistle kind of influence the flow of the game. Uh, that can be not as much fun as just watching the players themselves do it. But yeah, yeah I mean, we're we're pretty even down the board if you really look at it. I mean, the slight yeah. advantage to faceoffs for LA, but I think a lot of those again were like the defensive zone. Uh, obviously, shots on goals, the the tilting factor here. Right, and again, that, that heat map uh, tells a very bright, bright story for the Oilers. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, 
But that's, I mean, that's a token to Jonathan Quick right there. Like the yeah. dude has been absolutely phenomenal. Pretty amazing. Yeah, I mean, Seth is supposed to already saying the same thing. Like absolute MVP, no question about it. Come on, I just need a Mike Smith moment. Let's do it. Like maybe here, let me let me text Dylan and we'll we'll will it into. <laughs> That's a for sure thing. Once you actually start texting or, or draft tweeting, that happens to me all the time. I'll start writing a draft tweet, uh, for the end of the game. You know, I'll, I'll usually write a couple, result wise, mm -hmm. so I can just fire it off when the game ends. And it's usually when yeah. I'm writing. It's usually when I'm writing the one that, uh, that I think is going to happen, and then, like you said, Mike Smith's moment or something happens. Backspace. To the opposite, yeah, opposite effect. <laughs> Well, I just save it in my yeah. draft so I can laugh at myself later. Yeah. But yeah, Seattle Sports Diaries pointed out, uh, Ty kind of mentioned that too. No matter what, who win no matter who wins this game, Jonathan Quick MVP of the game. Yeah, for sure. He's he's battled hard. Uh and you love to he see can't it. score. You don't know how many years Quick has left, honestly. Yeah, he could mm -hmm. be the next Dustin Brown type on this team. Going back to the Stanley Cups they won in those years, uh back, mm -hmm. you know, when they they had those battles with the Blackhawks and um, the, they beat the Rangers in the cup right that year. And yeah. Oh no. Just that face wash. Damn. Mike Smith doing a great job of controlling rebounds right now. And I think that's the only reason why we don't have something on the board. You can see the Edmonton crowd right now is, um, I mean, they're, they're rowdy, but they look a little mm -hmm. tense. Oh yeah. Being honest. <laughs> your your heart rate is quite elevated at this point. The nerves are you're like you got that cold sweat going like, oh gosh. Yeah, I don't think I could have emotionally survived cracking playoffs after that season. <laughs> yeah. Uh, That's a whole different level. Mm -hmm. I don't know. We're gonna have to build towards that, right? Yeah. I I went 15 games before they won with me in the building. It was a uh, fun. Okay. We're getting some offensive faceoffs from LA here. They just got to capitalize on it. See if we can get something pushed back to the top and get some cycle going. And of course, Edmonton goes the other way. And who would it be? Ooh, good job shutting down McDavid there. McDavid scores. Unbelievable. That's it. So that'll pretty much do it because I don't see the yeah. Kings getting two more goals. Uh, no. Just came this down is... on the rush there. He curled back around the net. A penalty was going to be called, but it popped back yep. out to him, and he roofed it on the backhand, giving Edmonton that 2 to nothing lead. And Ty, you know what that means? That's a big goal. So we need the mm -hmm. goal horn. Game seven. Two to nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about the goal one. Yeah, I think, Oilers. I mean, you just watch McDavid kind of chases it behind the net, stays with the play. That's superstar stuff right there. Like the backy up over top quick. Like, yeah. Yeah. This is what you expect from McDavid. And he's, he's actually delivering in these playoffs. Has I think that's ever, what, I mean, that's gotta be like 14 points this series. Yeah. Easily. Easily. Yeah. He's been, he's been, just unbelievable. Give him the con Smythe right now type of material, even though there's but, I mean, a long ways to go. But I've been harping on this. You get your offense kind of in the offensive zone. Yeah. Edmonton beats you with that transition and they just made him pay. So just that quick response, you know, and mm -hmm. it's kind of like that that game within the game, right? You you feel like, oh, okay, we got down there, we've got a great thing going, and then oh shoot, there goes McDavid. Back down in mm -hmm. transition again. Mm -hmm. When you when you get gassed, when you get tired, and you've got to deal with that speed, even into the third period, uh, I mean, it wears you down. You, you don't really have great options. I mean, you can't take a speed out from underneath them because then it's one on one with quick, and a shootout scenario. You just like, <laughs> yeah, it's not great. Yeah, see how sports diaries not too thrilled throwing up because Kane is moving on. He's going to send me a tweet as well. Oilers are, are the team that's 
So, I mean, I I don't hate the Oilers. I'm not a huge Evander Kane fan, obviously, but I do love watching Connor McDavid. I think it's going to be fun to watch mm-hmm. him go further in the playoffs. So I I hear you. I I feel a little bit different about it. Uh, I do like seeing uh, Dry Idle and McDavid in the playoffs. I'm going to be interested to see what they do in round two. But yeah, I could I could d- do with a little less Evander Kane action. I'm I'm with you on that maybe, but I'll check my tweet later. Thanks for jumping back over here, Mike. How did the did the Mariners? Uh, do you want to want to give us an update on the Mariners in the comments? I'd love to hear what's <laughs> happening. I don't want to look at the score and ruin the surprise. And and you see there, Ty, the elation from McDavid. It's like just huge weight lifted off him. He's worked so hard. He just does that huge celebration, skating out to center ice. And I mean, this is his job, and this is his expectations. Like this is what the crowd, the coaching staff, his fellow players, this is what they expect out of him. And the dude delivers like pfft, unbelievable all by himself too. So they're reviewing. I'm not sure what they're reviewing right now. Cause I got too caught up in the celebrations, but they're reviewing something. Right. Uh, I don't have a producer in my ear telling me what happened. So this is how, just the average Joe does it. You just kind of wait to see what the broadcast is telling you, right? <laughs> yeah, I wasn't paying attention either. It was just hearing the crowd, seeing everything else. Like it could be a clock is... issue. Time. Yeah. yeah, they're they're making sure that the time is correct. I don't know. I have the stream kind of turned down, so I can't really hear what they're saying. Yeah, I've got it. Wow! Just... So the Mariners actually almost came back. Ooh. Mariners lost five to four. That team makes me drink. <laughs> yeah, I know. You're going to have to get on the, the Mariners detox plan. See, I used to just not watch them until June. Uh, it didn't really help anything, but, you know, I would be a little bit less disappointed. Uh, and I, I try not to be a fair weather fan, but it's been a long time since the Mariners have been good good like they've been good but they, like you go um, back to the my oh my era it was like the 90s <laughs> it was, yeah we're still living in those glory days even mm-hmm. here in 2022 and uh i i want to write some new chapters in the mariners legacy but i'm i'm not feeling the vibe right now they need to pick it up i'm not sure what they're gonna do they got to get those bats going uh maybe as the weather warms up that'll help but we'll see so we're under under three minutes here. Edmonton got that big second goal highlight moment for Connor McDavid, and it just kind of feels like that's going to be it. The empty net. Yep, so they've got their, their goalie out, Jonathan Quick, who's played Uh-oh. an incredible game. Uh, they send it down. Let's see what happens here. McDavid playing knee hockey like we all did as kids. <laughs> In the hallway with oh! his brother. Yep. We used to use a, a bouncy ball, so that thing was going all over the place. Yep. Mini sticks and bouncy ball, man. Get your reflexes up. Mike Smith standing tall in goal. No rebounds, doing what he needs to do. Who do you got? Dallas and Calgary, because that's who's meeting. Probably so I, picked, I picked Calgary uh, in my bracket. Uh, I, I do mm-hmm. like Dallas for uh, sentimental reasons. I'm a big Joe Pavelski guy from my years rooting for the Sharks. Yeah. And I really like watching him have success and, and the way he plays. Such a big player with such a, such a small frame, really intelligent player. But um, yeah, I really think Calgary is going to get that done. And and then you got Calgary and, and Edmonton in round two, if that's the way it goes. That would be pretty exciting. Battle of Alberta. We've been I mean, waiting for that for a while, right? Two two Canadian teams advance also? Right, let's yeah. go. Well, you just love the atmospheres in, in all of these barns up there. They just they go crazy. Mm-hmm. You love seeing the watch parties out in the street. Uh, that is one mm-hmm. thing I'm going to kind of miss with uh, Toronto being out. And uh, Seattle Sports Diaries saying Dallas is going to snatch game seven away. I love the prediction. I we'll mean, if, if Dallas can snatch it away, there's a pretty good chance I'll get to go see them play. Yeah, I would, would love cool. I would love to go 
watch a game in Dallas. Like you, you watch them and they play a song, the puck drops, and the crowd mm-hmm. sings it for like two and a half minutes. Like they finish the song almost. I yeah. don't That's it, a hockey crowd. I so love much watching fun. the broadcasts from that arena too. We were just talking about mm-hmm. this with a friend last night and uh, she's actually from Texas. And, you know, it's just known for being an electric environment. Sometimes, you know, it, it gets annoying watching on, on the TV broadcast because the angles are so low there on the, the TV um, mm-hmm. where the camera's at. And sometimes when they stand, you can't see through it, but you can just see how electric it is in there. And that's definitely a place I want to go try to catch a game before too long here. So yeah, if you have the opportunity to do that, go for it, man. That's oh, that'd yeah, be awesome. I, in a heartbeat, it'll happen. If it, if I'm down there and there's a game, uh, I'm definitely going to throw some money at. It. So a minute oh, forty I'll just here. Spend all my, my per diem on it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I had a chance. We were in. Um, we were down in Anaheim the year. Uh, the Sharks went on their cup run 2016 mm-hmm. and there was a chance they were going to play Anaheim in the first round. It didn't end up happening, but we were there that week and I was really hoping it was going to happen because I was going to go to the game, but that's the way it goes. Yeah. I mean that play right there, Mike Smith makes the saves. He's popping up and he's tapping the shin pads of his defenders. Like the dudes, the dudes feeling it. Yeah. He's, he's confident right now. It's yep. Oh, a little clip Buzz. of dry side will go into the bench. Crowd's buzzing right now. You just kind of feel yeah. it starting to close in on the Kings. They got that thousand mile stare as we always talk about in the sports world. Not many answers on the offensive side of things. Yeah, dry side went down. A little bit of a weird crumble there, but um yeah. They'll probably have a little bit of time to to rest up. I'm not sure when they're going to crank off those next couple games, but they'll have at least a couple days, right? Because they've got the game tomorrow, Dallas-Calgary, and I doubt they'd go back-to-back the next day. Uh, It's possible. I'd be surprised. But the NHL always surprises us. Mm. Uh, I would expect that series to maybe kick off Tuesday, depending on the outcome tomorrow and all the arena scheduling and things like that. But, yeah. Again, I just want to thank everybody for for dropping by the stream, you know, whether you stuck around for the whole thing or a few minutes or here or there. I do appreciate it. Seattle Sports Diaries, Brian Kennecott. We had Hugh Jazz, uh, a few other a few other users pop by. Oh. And it's been a lot of fun. Ty, of course. Thanks for being here. Oh, Seattle Sports Diaries saying, no joke, didn't do a bracket, but got a feeling that Avs are going to take it all. Lightning are going to lose in seven games to them. Another good prediction. I'm going to I'm going to write all these down and I'm going to revisit them, okay? Oh man. All right, so LA oh. trying to get something here last waning seconds, about 30 seconds left it looks like. Edmonton hanging on to that 2 nothing lead. Looks like they're going to win this one. They do get yeah. the puck out of the zone, down empty net and he couldn't get it. Stop. <laughs> yeah, that's so why I was like, "Oh, Oh, Mike Smith going for the – oh, dang. Stop yeah. at the blue line. Do some be little Martin see, Brodeur action yeah, and do a goalie say, goal. Be, be fun to see a goalie goal. So that's it. Edmonton going to move on into the second round. Uh, again, n- another fun evening here uh, watching the stream and Connor McDavid, just a powerhouse again. Uh, Evander Keane – you know, he played strong tonight. It's it's not everyone's favorite guy, but really good game by the Oilers. They end up with 41 shots. Jonathan Quick was incredible tonight, uh, but just not enough. LA Kings couldn't find a way to put it in the net, and that really was the difference, Ty. I don't I don't know if you have any other kind of parting thoughts on the on the game tonight and what you saw, but um yeah, what do you what do you think? Going into I mean, the next round. So the next round could be really fun. Uh, if you have a matchup with Dallas, you kind of have like that one line team versus kind of a one line team. We'll see if they kind of spread out some of their stars, dry and McDavid just kind of put some more pressure on, uh, but that Robertson line from Dallas, like pfft, good Lord, they're going to give yeah. Mike Smith a bunch of trouble because they're very <laughs> proficient at producing rebounds and capitalizing on them. 
Uh, they always kind of seem to, to do a good job of being in the right spots too when those rebounds occur. Yeah. But if it's Calgary, I mean, that also could be a super fun, maybe some more like offensive, like crazy hockey. I kind of expected, you know, Calgary to kind of run away with it. That series honestly really surprised me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't, I didn't think Dallas would be hanging in there, but. No, I'm kind of with you yeah. on that. I, th- I thought it would be, you know, maybe a, a five I mean, game, maybe a six game series, but. Yeah. Same thing with the, the series we're watching right now is I didn't see LA having enough to stop Edmonton, let alone push it to seven. Right. Yeah, pretty some, some pretty surprising results uh, in the first round this year. A lot of great series. Uh, we've had those blowouts in games, even though the series have been close. Same thing with Toronto and Tampa. Just some really bizarre moments, too. Like we had the mm-hmm. glass fall on the off-ice official, uh, on and on and on. Never a dull moment in the playoffs. Sports Diaries, I'm going to give you a little shout-out here. He's got a new podcast up, so go check that out friend of the show i was able to be on his uh show last night so thanks again for all the support seattle sports diaries and everybody that logged in tonight big thanks to ty for hanging in there through the whole stream uh providing your analysis let's take a quick look at the um let's take a quick look at the bracket here ty and then we'll kind of wind down and log out here in a minute uh so kind of you gave your, your thoughts there a little bit on potential uh, Calgary and uh, Edmonton series or Dallas potentially. Uh, let's talk mm. quickly about Colorado, St. Louis. <laughs> oh, I have a little emotional investment in this one. Oh yeah. Uh, obviously being a, an avalanche fan for like the vast majority of my life. Uh, man, St. Louis is a, is a scary opponent and Colorado has a thing with round two uh, over the last you know few years. Uh, I think this series has potential to go pretty far, but yeah. I don't know. Well, I would love to see Colorado just kind of get set and get in zone and do what they do best. But then I also kind of look at the bench and, and Bedard. I'm not, I'm not sure he's going to be what is needed to be a Stanley Cup winning coach. Uh, that position is very, very important going into you know conference finals and stuff like that. Even the semifinals, I think that's critical. Yeah. Can, can you adapt to what St. Louis is going to throw at you? I guess there's a lot of different things St. Louis can do. In, in St. Louis, we've seen it, you know, time and time again. They've, they've got some great ways of changing their looks, providing different mm-hmm. elements in game and in series. They play a really physical style and then they can change it up and play a really finesse style. Um, mm-hmm. The coaching there, I would definitely agree with you a little bit, um, maybe an, an advantage there. Um, Colorado, we've seen them stumble in the playoffs. They did last year, uh, you know, going back a few years. They just haven't been able to get over that hump in the second round and later rounds. So, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. I think as as we go deeper in, it's definitely a, a focus on the coaching and line matching and matchups and things like that and in-series and in-game adjustments. So, yeah. I'm kind of with you on that. I think Colorado overall is the the more star power, talented team, but St. Louis just they find a way and they they can make you look silly really fast. Mm-hmm. So, okay, real quick now we've got Florida advancing and Tampa in the East. So that's going to be really interesting series there. You've got the President's Trophy winners against the defending Stanley Cup champs. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, how do you how do you pick a winner in this one? <laughs> Uh, I mean, obviously, I, w- I would love to see Florida take Thornton and go all the way. I think that'd be awesome. Just kind of check mark end yeah. of his career. Like, thanks. As, but as Jumbo, he, he hasn't even hit the ice yet. Right. That's what I was just about to ask you. But he'll get out know, there eventually. I, mean, I feel like Toronto's got a pretty proficient offense, and Tampa Bay was able to adapt to it and kind of do what they needed to do. So. It'll be interesting to see if they can hang with kind of Florida's a little bit more physical kind of big, fast offense. I don't know. Yeah, and and maybe that fatigue factor starts to set in, right? This is your third year making a deep run. Uh, Even the first round can be a lot for teams to deal with. So I don't know. And they went seven, so. It felt like Florida was playing with fire that entire series against the Caps, and they still figured it out, and they still were able to overcome 
some of their uh, gaffes defensively and some slow starts and just in general lackluster focus at times. Uh, so maybe that was just their way of shedding some of that playoff inexperience and, and going forward and see what's going to happen there. But yeah, really intriguing series. I think I'm favoring Florida just because sentiment, sentimental uh, Jumbo Joe value there. I'd love to see him yeah. get into a game. But man, Tampa's a lot to deal with as Toronto just found out. So, And tomorrow we're going to have to wait to uh, preview that next matchup with Carolina. You got New York or Pittsburgh coming out of there in that game seven. Can't wait to see those tomorrow. I'm going to kick back a little bit and enjoy those. And uh, yeah, Ty, it's been a really great time tonight. I want to give you a big, big thanks again. Really great having you on the stream and uh, really appreciate, you know, the friendship that's developed and also, you know, your hockey knowledge mm -hmm. and, and your skills and things like that behind the scenes. A lot to offer to the Kraken community and just a big shout out to you guys. If you if you want to follow a good hockey dude on Twitter, go over at see Kraken dude and give him a follow. So, Ty, thanks again. Any last words or promotions or events or anything like that you want to throw out there? Throw them out there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean promotions we got two more of these tomorrow like buckle up let's go yeah uh, i think that um, new york pittsburgh game is gonna be amazing uh i can see it going either way uh, it would be really interesting to see if, if sydney crosby shows up one i think that could be a, a kind of a, a huge factor in that one but definitely. yeah um, first time kind of doing one of these watch alongs we definitely could get better we're doing more but yeah oh, i really enjoyed sure. it it was a good time yeah. Well, well, we'll definitely have you back on the show more, uh, you know, next year as we go in, do some more post-game rapid reaction. And, I, you know, I do those morning cup of cracking shows. And so, yeah, you're always welcome. Definitely have you on a little more often as we go into the future and appreciate you dropping by tonight. So we're going to say goodbye to Ty Jacobs, the man, the myth, the legend from Vancouver, Washington. Uh, I want to hear that guitar next time, okay? <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Have a good night. Uh, I'm going to do a quick wrap up and uh, we'll let you go now. So, so thanks a lot, Ty. Cool. Take care. All right. Okay. So like we talked about, we got those game sevens tomorrow, Calgary, Dallas, New York, Pittsburgh. Uh, it's been a great stream tonight, guys. I really want to say a big thanks for everyone that dropped by and engaged and liked and commented and subscribed and all that great stuff. I'm going to keep this going. I'm going to keep coming at you with updates and live streams throughout the playoffs. So thanks again. Big thanks to Ty Jacobs. Really great dude and uh, really had a great time tonight with you guys on the stream. So I'm going to log out. Have a great night. We'll talk to you tomorrow on Twitter. That's at Sasquatch NHL. And we'll catch you again on another stream here at Sasquatch NHL real soon. Have a great night, guys.